It's time for Twig. This week in Google, Jeff Jarvis is here. Stacy Higginbotham is here. There's lots to talk about. Uh, Google Stadia has opened up its free tier. Uh, a UK judge says Google has to give its ranking algorithm to an SEO expert. Google says, are you kidding, Your Honor? They're working on autocomplete for speech. You'll hear it in Google Duo. And how Steakums became the most trusted brand on the Internet. It's all coming up next on Twig. This Week at Google is brought to you from Twit's LastPass Studios. Stay in control when it comes to your company's access points and authentication. LastPass makes enterprise-level security simple for your remote workforce. Check out lastpass.com slash twit to learn more. Podcasts you love. From people you trust. This, this is, is Twit. twit. This is Twig, This Week in Google, episode 554, recorded Wednesday, April 8th, 2020. Space Force. This episode of This Week in Google is brought to you by IT Pro TV. Use IT Pro TV for 100% remote conferencing and training. Go to itpro.tv slash twit2 to start setting up your next conference today. It's time for Twig this week in Google, the show where we cover the latest from Google, Facebook, Twitter, the Googleverse, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Joining us now in her Josette costume, it's <laughs> Stacey <laughs> Higginbot. Josette. Josette. Is it French? Yeah. Okay. Uh, Stacey Higginbotham at Giga Stacy. Is it spelled with an H? Cosette? Oh, no, Cosette. C. Like COVID. Yes. Got it. Yes. Cosette, Cosette as in COVID. COVID. We're, we're, uh, we cannot play it for you because we don't want the family to take us down. But we, <laughs> we played before the show a cute little video of an English family uh, all singing together doing a, their version of One Day More rewritten for quarantine that was the contribution the gift of mr jeff jarvis hello jeff i have got i've got a worm now in all their brains they won't get that song out it of their heads for 24 catchy. hours it is it pretty is. catchy is. one day more. oh god his uh his uh special link today on his lower third is his covid twitter list and it's something we've talked about on the show before but might as well make it easy for everybody to go to bitly bit dot ly slash COVID Twitter list. And the reason you want that, of course, you have to have a Twitter account, is you want to subscribe to it because he's put together a list of all the uh, most reliable, best sources for COVID information. 563 epidemiologists, virologists, infectious disease doctors, researchers, and NGOs. pandas. No. I was about no. to do another musical. I was going to be 575. No, how did that get there? Oh, it's the... It's the um, you know what they're, they're, you know what they're doing. No, yes, no, no, no. that's the pandas <laughs> making sweet, sweet love. Sweet, finally. sweet love because they were too shy to do it <laughs> when people were at the zoo. This is in Hong Kong, and now uh, that the people are gone, they uh, is South China Morning mating. Post mating. Yeah, yes. isn't that great? So that yeah, somebody obviously retweeted that. I wish there were a way you could do it in TweetDeck. I wish there were a way you could turn off retweets in uh, just Twitter in general, because a lot of times the retweeting is just, you know, repetition. Not among the scientists, because it because it does, it is interesting to see what they choose okay. to retweet. Good point. Like All right. Good point. And the Laurie... so, so the scientists are there. So I've interviewed three of the scientists on my list. Oh, nice. An epidemiologist. A, I've got the link also in the rundown under the coronavirus. Uh, epidemiologist uh, Greg Consalves from Yale. An infectious diseases expert and Ebola veteran, uh, Kurtika Kupali from California, and uh, Angela Rasmussen from uh, the School of Public Health at Columbia. And I'm asking them on behalf of journalists how we should be covering this story, what we're doing wrong. What do which they is a say? Amount. What do they say? Well, one thing is that we're doing a very bad job of sourcing the experts. You know, for example, on NBC, they have, a, they have a good guy who's, I'm pointing at the TV, uh, they have a good guy uh, who's, um, who's on constantly, but he's a spinal surgeon. Why are they putting a spinal surgeon on about a viral pandemic? Yeah. 
The New York Times had an, uh, an influential op-ed that was written by a diet Dr. Sugar Shill and advisor to the California Walnut Board. Not that there's anything wrong with California walnuts, but it has nothing to do with the pandemic and is amateurish. We see armchair epidemiology from columnists uh, all over. And so they say we're not going to the experts, which is what I wanted to see. This comes from... That's because the experts are busy. I mean, as any well, working journalist will tell you, you go for them. who reaches they out. They are and is incredibly generous. They've, they've spent, you know, I've, 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 they answer my questions. They've spent time with me and I have no audience. Um, I they think, want look to how get much the facts Anthony out. Fauci's on TV. I think they understand that their expertise is needed in a sea yes. of misinformation. I think, though... It looks to me like the media's, especially television's, consistent choice of style over substance. They always want somebody who is good looks for a good. sound bite, looks good, speaks quickly. And a lot of times you get the experts, especially the first time they're on TV, they're, they're hesitant, maybe they're scared. Uh, well, the other thing is they, they ask them, them wrong questions. Well, also right? the other so problem you... with experts, and I'll, I'll say this also, is they equivocate because they know there's no... It's not a black and white thing. And on TV, you want somebody to say strong, yes. positive statements, not, well, sort of. It's kind of, but maybe, and then, and that's not good TV. Unfortunately, it's more accurate. What are you going to do? TV's um, TV. Yeah, well, that's why you should probably not get your news from TV. As I'm fond of saying about journalists, we, in science, we always think the last, the latest word is the last word. Right. Right. Wine will kill you. Wine will save you. You know, one day after the next. And we don't understand the process of science very well. Uh, and we've got to understand things are uncertain. And but but um, but I'm, I'm finding these experts. I mean, you're right, Stacey. They're very busy and I feel reluctant to take a minute away from their time. But but to a person, they are eager to have the public get the right story. Uh, they're eager to help. Um, they're eager to answer questions. Uh, the right questions. They're not so eager to answer dumb questions. I've also had them come to me asking for help. I have one company for pu one publication. The publication screwed them up. I happen to know somebody high up there. I emailed that person that got fixed because they couldn't get it done. Um, we can be very frustrating, us in media. Mm -hmm. My husband says that to me all the time. <laughs> oh, wait, that's just me. <laughs> that's when you were dressed as a chicken, but it's a long story. Uh you put this in here, Jeff, and I don't know if this is related. Scaremongering headlines. Well, just there was a discussion, boys. So, are you obeying stay-at-home orders? Google is watching. Now, if they'd said, "Are we obeying stay-at-home orders?" Fine, but you, it makes it look like Google is watching you individually. Okay. And there were I saw Come three on. or four headlines like this on That's the same story, those, which is those headlines do better. I mean, if you A/B test those, people click on the. You. I know that is all that is. It is, but it's irresponsible. You always want to put you in a headline because then, you know, it's, well, But it's not this particular you. one because it, because Google has done something I think extremely valuable in releasing its data um, county by county in the U.S., worldwide, about our, our, our delta in going to workplaces, transit hubs, stores, parks, something else. And, and it's a very good check on us to say, are we as a, as a population – uh, practicing social distancing, uh, but it's not against individuals, and that's that's why I just I just wanted to whine about that. Yeah, I've yeah, they're not looking stuff. at you specifically. Although in some countries, the they are. Is. <laughs> the government is, and I wonder. I mean, I, it's pretty clear that uh, we're going to probably want to do that here, right? So I have a story for y'all on that, um, on using peer to peer networks to. Be privacy focused and track, do track and trace um, using Bluetooth Yay. on your cell phone. Yay. So this is an app. I wrote about it last week. It's still not out, which is kind of sad, but it's called Coalition. It's from Nodal, which is a peer-to-peer -peer IoT network. And what it does, and there's a lot of caveats here, but this, you download this on your phone. What it's going to do is when you pass other people who also have downloaded the app and who have self-selected and said, yes, I have COVID-19 or I have been diagnosed with it, what it will do is it will let you know if you have interacted with someone who has later come up and said, I have COVID-19. It'll let you know that you had an exposure to them. And it does it in a way that is local to the device. And it doesn't involve anyone except for you and the various phones that you have passed in time. So. That's an interesting idea. And 
And do you think it's more private because it's peer to peer? It's private because they're not loading the data up to the cloud. Um, everything's encrypted and they don't want to know who you are. I see. They just want to let you know. Now, there's there are other How do they do it if they don't load it to the cloud? They must have a common database. They have somewhere. a database that runs on your phone because they're tracking your uh, earnings. Oh, so Nodal, but yeah, that's Nodal's a cash app, right? It's, well, yes. It's, oh, and it's GDPR compliant. Oh, so it's. Wow. Ta da. Um, uh, sorry, it is a cat. They have a separate app that is a Bluetooth asset tracking network. So, like a okay. tile. Right. Um, and it usually, customers in the um, transportation, it's not Lime Bike, but other bike the, sharing companies the problem use with it. with this, it's not global. And so. <laughs> but it does run with Singapore's, tra it, it does interoperate with Singapore's track and trace really? app and another one. Yes. But in so, a one way street. So, it's not contributing. Or it wouldn't be private to Singapore's database. It's just sucking data it, right. from it. So I think well, that that's not a good. That's not a good. It it's community. only going to tell you. It's not telling enforcement. It's saying to you that you have been exposed. That's yeah, all it wants to do. They're free riding on the government's invasive surveillance. Well, in Singapore, they're working with it. So if someone in if you go to Singapore and you have the coalition app running on your phone, it will pull data from it'll pull but it won't people. push so you it will invisible. push your data to them oh it, no, does. it will push your data to them oh, yes well then it's not private <laughs> it it shares a hash with the singapore thing yeah but at some point they have to be able to notify people about you in singapore well what it'll do is they'll share the hash with singapore and the app will and then recognize singapore, its presence it'll in say, the hash. i know who i am I know yes, who this is. it'll say this okay. hash has been seen Actually, that's a by good idea. the following. That's how the Singapore app should work too. That's how all these apps oh, should yeah. work. Yeah, you tell that to some of these governments. Yeah. What you also need, what Germany has done, uh, what I think New York is going to start to do with New Jersey and Connecticut, is you have to hire people to do contact tracing. You know, I come down with it and I say, this is where I've been. And if I could give more data like that, but then you need to manually get to people and say, you need to stay inside for the next 14 days. So this is this is uh, about people thinking about what comes next after quarantine. And if you can dampen it with quarantine, uh, you could actually, in theory, with quarantine, eliminate it. Let's say nobody comes and goes in the city limits of Petaluma. We quarantine everybody in Petaluma. Everybody who's sick gets taken care of. They all get better. Now the virus has no presence in Petaluma until somebody comes yeah, was... in. And then, but, but that's why you need track and trace because at that point, you've you've stopped and, and the testing. virus. It, at that point, when somebody gets sick, you test them. You get and you need people, and that's the problem is we don't have these people. You need people who will then go out find everybody that that person came into contact with, quarantine them. So it, it quarantine continues, but with a limited subset of people, just those who've come in contact with them. Germany uh, was hiring five hundred people, and they had ten thousand applied. We got plenty of people They're who are unemployed yeah. right now. Yep. I just saw a Gallup uh, figure today that forty six million Americans, adult Americans have been hurt economically by losing their jobs or being laid off or had their hours cut substantially. 46 million people could be hired to do this. Yeah. Good. All right. It's not that skilled, I guess. No. Yeah. It's not. There's a template you work with. I mean, right. it's, it's in, a way, in a way, it's phone sales. Hi, I'd like to save your life. Yeah. Uh, tell me who you saw in the last, you know, 24 hours. And then, of course, there'll be antibody testing, we hope, sometime soon, and that might help. Uh, UK screwed that up. What happened? They thought they had the antibody testing, and then they had to admit that it doesn't work. I mean, we're screwing up here royally, but so is the UK. So it was interesting to see a lot of, uh, there are a few handful of uh, federal or national governments that are doing this right, but, but a lot of governments are screwing up. And it's interesting, here in the States, we have an unusual situation. We have a, we're a federation of, of local uh, state governments, and the states are stepping up in some cases, some cases not. I wonder if if it's going to be there'll be a larger distrust of big government out of this maybe, um, or a need for well, it. What's the contrary? No, I would say what we've. I mean, I don't know. I look at our current response and I'm like, wow, this really shows how broken our federal government is. And yes, I'm reliant on my state, but I'm also 
historically we have relied on the federal government to do things like, I don't know, coordination between the states. Right. But and maybe Jay Inslee's I, doing such a good job, your governor. That, he is. Uh, he's doing a great job. Yeah. But yes. Yes. I, I. It's interesting how some governors are coming forward. Inslee's one, Cuomo's another. Our governor in California, Newsom, is Murphy here. in Jersey. Uh, yeah, and uh, it's interesting how they are becoming national presences in the. In but the, they, but every single is. one of them has complained about how they well, wish the federal government uh, would step admittedly up. Admittedly, in the vacuum created by an effective federal yes. government. Right. But, I don't think anyone. I mean, I think most people, if they sat and thought about it. They would be disappointed if we did a greater federation and we took apart what our federal government has done, right? Like, and we took that. If, I mean, think about things like a, interstate commerce. I mean, we rely an, on that heavily. If there is an ideology yes. in the White House, though, and I sometimes wonder if there's any coherent ideology, but if there is, it's it's the old Reagan ideology of federal government shouldn't be should be as small as possible. It no, is, but this is no, Leo, this, this is beyond mine. that. Yeah. Reagan, Reagan wanted to cut government down, the Lord knows, and taxes down, yes, but did not want to destroy the institution of the federal government. What we see happening now is an effort to destroy its value as an institution. I don't want to get too political and get you in trouble. And, was, oh, I, yeah. I don't care about trouble. I don't know. I don't know if we but want to go to this. Remember this Ronald is one of Reagan saying the nine most terrifying words in the English language were, I'm here from the government, I mean, I'm from no the government and I'm here to help? <laughs> yes, but also that was- It's a good line. Not, he was good at those lines anyway. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Uh, yeah. I don't know. I mean, just, you know, uh, one of the things, look, I got nothing else to do. One of the things that fascinates me <laughs> in intellectual. We could talk about Google. We can, but we're not. <laughs> no, we will. There's lots to talk about. One of the things that fascinates me, is, and I think a lot of people, is the intellectual uh, process of what's next, of thinking uh, uh, scenarios about what, what might be, what might the world might look like in a year. You know, we talked uh, a few minutes ago on Windows Weekly about Microsoft saying, you know what, we're not going to do any in-person conferences until July 2021, more than it's more amazing. than a year from now. And in a way, that's a that's an acknowledgement that in-person conferences, they're, they're not going to be the same. Uh, Tony Fauci said yesterday, I don't think we should go back to shaking hands ever. No. Well, ever. I'm happy about that. I'm so happy about that. Ever. <laughs> no more shaking hands. It's and a no more world. No we more European kissy kiss. Oh, but I like the kissy kiss. Peace, peace. No, no, no more kissy kiss. <laughs> All right. Uh, and, and trying to figure out whether it's one cheek or two cheeks or three cheeks, which one you start with. No, 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 no. It's over. It's yeah, over. Europe. It is over. It's over. As is the handshake, the Gone. great American handshake. So we're going to emerge from our slumber, rubbing our eyes into a different world. I just think. And then you're going to put your hand, hand sanitizer on because you just oh, touched yeah. your eyes. <laughs> I touched my face. All right. Google. Google. Google says Stadia is free. This is their online gaming service that they were charging 10 bucks a month for. Well, no, they still will. There's still Google's Stadia Pro. But now they, and they, by the way, this is nothing they didn't promise. They said they would do this eventually. Open it up to everybody. There'd be a free tier and a paid tier. Uh, and, in, and, and in consequence, I think, it announced that there's a lot more new Google Stadia users. I wonder, though. If uh, this is going to make any difference in the success of Stadia, discuss. See, now you want me to go back to COVID, don't you? Yeah, well, we do because I don't give a <laughs> damn about Stadia. Stadia is not I like I could a super care hot topic less. For me, but, um, All right, you're right. I picked a weak candidate. <laughs> I'm like, oh, Stadia. I mean, oh, Kevin you know, says I miss Stadia Wave. Pro. Let's folks. talk about Wave for a while. Uh, uh, yeah, it's oh. like Google Wave. What is Kevin saying to you? Stadia Pro folks get two free months as well. He just checked his subscription. So there, you found a Stadia Pro yeah. subscription. And if you too. and you get a trial of Stadia Pro for some months, and of course, the hope Google's hope is you forget and you continue to pay for that for a long time. I don't. I mean, maybe it's not that you forget. Maybe it's just that hey, maybe you'll see that this is valuable to you. Maybe yeah. you'll find. Uh, I mean, it's smart to say. I have all of this content and you are stuck at home and bored off your mind and you'll be like, oh, my God, I love this new addictive weird game. And then you'll just keep paying for it. I don't think it's as nefarious as like you'll forget. I think it's more like well, that's the always, first oh, bite it's is It's a method free. of subscription businesses, Stacey. That's, yeah. right? that's always has subscriptions. Time memorial. That's kind of, yeah. Right. That forget, lose track of. <laughs> when we got credit card billing in the newspaper business and magazine business, that was the happiest moment. Oh, yeah. Any, any circulation director ever had. Yeah. So, uh, all right, fine. 
Uh, Alex Stamos. There's a name you should remember. He was the security guy at Facebook. He's brilliant. Well, I think he's widely respected as a security mm -hmm. guy, right? He mm -hmm. is going to consult with Zoom to make it better. Good. I, Good. You know, I think I know we're all complaining about Zoom's nefarious, you know, ways uh, to make life easier for people. I I'm really think, panic. <laughs> I really more think panic all over my left ear. <laughs> the only issue I have with Zoom was that they did say it was end to end encrypted, but they yeah, they really kind right, of Stacey. played with some language there. Oh, we made our own encryption scheme that is actually so explain, not. Can, I, I, I haven't dug into this. Explain to me their faint there. What their were faint? they trying to say? Convince so you of? So what I usually, the way I look at encryption is I look for people who use AES encryption, right? And there's different grand, grades of that. Now, in, in you know, the highest level is like 256. And the, that's usually what people are talking about when they talk about encryption. They're, tell, they're talking about some sort of difficult math problem that is, I would even say, some sort of peer-reviewed difficult math that needs to happen that truly keeps your traffic secure. It is possible to come up with your own encryption scheme that is actually secure. Most companies, I don't think, use it. Um, so they're not using AES encryption. They're using their own version of it. No, that's so, not true. They are. They're using AES-128. Oh, but, they're using 128. I'm sorry. Thank you, uh, Leo. But they're also using ECB, which is a widely discredited uh, form of encryption over 128. There's also the second problem. We interpret end-to-end -end encryption as equivalent to trust no one, that only the two ends of the conversation could ever access the contents. And it is encrypted, but it's not, but it has to be decrypted at the Zoom servers. And that's because of the way Zoom works. It would have to be. They have to uh, understand it so they can route it. So it's not so much they're nefarious. See, this is the real debate about Zoom: is are they nefarious or incompetent? <laughs> are you? Or did their market change? Either. So what are I, Or did their market yeah, change? They were a business tool, and they were good enough for business, and now we're using it in different ways. And governments using and, it. And, and you wouldn't have things. Zoom bombing. Ex I mean, Zoom bombing isn't Zoom's fault exactly. Uh, it's just that everybody started using it, and they used it in the default, which is good for business. You know, it's funny they put passwords. Zoom. Zoom's been, I think, to their credit really trying to address all of this I think oh, so yeah. and hiring Alex Stamos is a very, very good thing. But, uh, uh, they're, yeah, they're being used in ways they didn't anticipate. Their defaults yeah, were not the most it. secure. They overstated. They are not E2E. They are not end to end. So for them to say it was, was, it was an incorrect thing. Um, that's, and Stacey's right. That's kind of the worst of it is that you, is it, they brought a incorrect. presumption and no, no, the trust. there's far worse. The worst of it, <laughs> if you want the worst of it, oh, is all right. Zoom is written in China. They, they uh -huh. hire Chinese coders. There's a, there are three companies in China, all really the same company that does all the coding for Zoom. Zoom is based in Santa Clara, but none of the code is written here. It's all written in China that uh, there were briefly routing calls that had nothing to do with China through China. There was some concern there. That was looked like it was just a load balancing thing, and it probably wasn't intense intentional. They have poor security practices. For instance, when you record video, they just store it unencrypted, unprotected in an Amazon S3 bucket, which so mm -hmm. it could be easily found. Their methodology for uh, naming uh, the Zoom conference, you know, you get a what is it, a nine or ten digit code, was I, not very good. And terrible, so as a result, but... there is a, a war driving. It's called Z War Drive program that will find about 100 of those an hour. So that's what's allowed. Zoom bombing is that people can easily find open Zoom. That and meetings. people who have no friggin' life. Well, and there's creeps on the internet, it's sad to yeah. say. You know, yeah. uh, I've mentioned this before, but I have a friend with a 12, is in a recovery uh, program. And, you know, in order to do an AA meeting, you have to have an open meeting. And uh, they were using Zoom and they were getting really pretty awful Zoom bombing. I mean, these, I don't know if it's kids or adults or whatever, or just they're trolls and they were doing things that were intentionally triggering uh, and repulsive racial epithets pornography but also stuff aimed at alcoholics well is that what, but but if you had to if you tried to have your AA meeting on hangout it'd be the same thing wouldn't it well that's it's exactly an open right. address. A, a public meeting is going to have that zoom needs better moderation tools which they are 
Some people just don't know it. There, it, there's a lobby. There's way there, you know, they call it waiting room, but there's ways that you can make it better. You look at people in, yeah. But it, yeah. but uh, you know, and I've talked to my friend, and, and uh, they said, well, but the, it's against the canons canon of the group to in any way make it hard to come in because there, are, I proposed, you know, you could start and then close it. Nope, can't do that. You could have a waiting room. Nope, can't do that. You could have a password. No, definitely can't do that. So a lot of the things one would you and I might use. You can't do, and yes, you're right, exactly, uh, Jeff. This would be the problem with any media. But let me say just this. Zoom right now beats that mm, out of Google Hangouts. Google it's Hangouts, the last show we said is 25X. Everybody yep. is fuzzy and, and yep. frozen. Yep. And Zoom has been a lifesaver to me teaching my students and staying in touch with people. So I and I just, I'm grateful for Zoom. It's pretty clear that, first of all, I set up our own private Twit server. It's called twit.team. It's using an open source product called Jitsi. It is end-to-end -end encrypted. Uh, it's in every respect, you know, and Lisa won't use it because you're not going to make a sales call and say, oh, you got to use this thing. You're going to use Zoom. It's just, you just are. And everybody's using it. So mm -hmm. I think Zoom's doing exactly the right thing, which is saying, we blew it. You know, they've grown and astronomically from 10 million daily active users in December to 200 active daily uh, users last month. And and their CEO says, you know, we blew it. So we're going to, no more new features. Everybody on the team is working hard on, the, on, on securing it. And I think calling Alex Alex Stamos and saying, we need you, come help us, is exactly the right thing to do. Is, is a confession. You know, and, and, and the other thing in this story is my dear colleagues in media, who couldn't go after Facebook every hour now because oh, oh, people are back there. Even Leo's there, for God's sakes. We got nobody wants to hate Facebook this week. So who are we gonna hate? Zoom. And sorry. oh, I don't think that's it, Jeff. Oh, I think there's I, been a I lot of coverage. Just, it's gone way over the edge. Well, we're just—it's kind of this squirrel mentality, right? Yeah, uh, that's squirrel. what I'm saying. That's what I'm saying. And they're looking, but they're looking for an evil rabid squirrel. I don't think they're looking for an evil rabbit squirrel. They're just paying attention to what's big. And when something gets, I mean, this makes sense. This is what you're supposed to do as a journalist. When something blows up, you say to yourself, all right, let's poke this and see what comes out in, in this oh, case, but, security but flaws. Yes, yeah, Stacey, you're right. But, but I agree with all of that. And people should be informed. But I saw too many stories that said, how to get off Zoom. You shouldn't be on Zoom. Zoom is wrong. Zoom is going to be awful for you. And that's just simply not true. And yeah, then you have well, I had that, school systems I had that experience. Off of it. Well, by the way, the Pentagon's never allowed people to use Zoom. NASA doesn't allow people to use Zoom. Yeah. Elon Musk's and SpaceX doesn't. Have. The New York City schools now doesn't. Um, and so, you know, Zoom it might have fumbled the opportunity. I suspect they haven't if they can if they can make it more secure. But there are plenty of other choices. Microsoft Teams, uh, if you're all Apple, Apple FaceTime, that's limited to 32 people and it requires Apple products. Um there's Google Meet. I don't know. Uh, As you mentioned, Hangouts Meet is just, not great. Here's Please. my sad complaint here. I am so sick of like proposing with my friends. Hey, let's all get on a, a virtual <laughs> happy hour. And they're like, all right, FaceTime. And I'm like, no. They're like, uh, Hangouts? And I'm like, okay. And then someone's like, no. What about Zoom? No, I'm not using Zoom anymore. And I'm like, oh, I hate everyone. Oh, that's everyone. too bad, yeah, because see, that's see, the drawback. Yep, yep, is yep, there yep. is a good solution. And Blame we need media, Stacey. We need an easy way to do it. We need a good solution that everybody can get their heads around. What I've been telling people is use Zoom. It's Everybody understands it. It's easy. The security flaws are not significant unless you have reason you know, to hide. And, and everything I'm, I'm doing getting is my whole family on Duo. Duo is great. Working. And Duo is cross platform. It is. It, yeah. It's cross platform. It's easy and it works. And actually, but, Duo does yeah, great and it has great quality. Like, Much better than uh, Hangouts. Yeah. Yeah. How have you found so Skype that's to what be I've during been doing. this? Oh, it's as terrible. a company. I think Microsoft is, is, is good. Not I mean, is Skype is Skype degrading, is what I'm asking. Well, yeah, this Skype, is, the, by the way, <laughs> that's one of the things Google's, this is Google's warning about. They're saying, you know, so many people are using Hangouts Meet. Uh, we might start seeing some degradation. Maybe I think that's Oh, already. they've seen it like crazy. <laughs> it's been awful. Yeah. And so I think everybody. And I'm Mr. Google fanboy, you know. No. I, I did a call with some Google people last week, and I said, guys, sorry to tell you, but Hangouts sucks. And they've silently chortled. This is the release notes for Hangouts 33. 
Video quality may now decrease if server load increases. <laughs> and, uh, and frankly, uh, teams had problems in Europe. Their servers couldn't keep up. Uh, I mean, we're just, we're just killing the, net, the Internet right now. On the other hand, it's no, sort no, of working. We're, killing, we're not killing the Internet. We're just killing these particular products. Well, Netflix had to step down its bandwidth use in uh, Europe. Europe. Uh, the default for Europe's YouTube is now trouble. 480p everywhere. Um, I no, know, no, the internet, no, the internet's being hit. It's holding up. And God bless it. We say this every single show for the last three weeks. We're very lucky that we have it. This would be a completely different experience if we didn't. Thank you, Jeff, Let's, for saving the internet. It's now five o'clock. Let's all clap for the internet. <laughs> I like that. <laughs> oh, I was like, does that mean we drink to the internet? <laughs> we, no. we, we, uh, we do we, that too. We clap for medical workers and first responders at 7 p.m. But at 5 p.m. we clap for the internet. Thank you, internet. And you know what? There are a lot of people keeping that internet flowing. That yeah, true. that's true too. It's not, uh, it's not a humanless en endeavor. And boy, I mean, look at your family using Google Duo. That's awesome. So they're lucky they have somebody like you, Stacy, who can uh, navigate this. We, we tried to have a family a group meeting um, on Friday, and the kids had no trouble with uh, this uh, the Jitsi that I set up. But there was one older person who I couldn't figure it out, and she said, "Well, I have a I have a paid Zoom account. Can we use that?" And we said, "Yes, fine. Use Zoom. It's oh, better than nothing." Oh. That's their story. It, it is. Look, it's better than so, so I got some really good suggestions from uh, listeners for my father, which I mentioned last week. Um, was it TeamView or whatever it's called? TeamViewer? Yeah, I wouldn't recommend Team it. TeamViewer. Yeah, that's really what okay. it. It's okay. Uh, it's, you know, uh, what, our former sponsor, uh, LogMeIn's uh, GoToMeeting is actually very good. It's a great choice. Well, here's my other question for the week. My father just says he can't get on the internet. It could I, be something he messed I up with his laptop. Tweet. I saw your tweet. It could yeah. just be that his router is not on. And, right. I, and I don't know how to he's tell 95. him. He's 95. Yeah, 94. 94. So I don't know how to tell him to figure out whether the router is on or not. How does he do that? Oh, Can no. he just go to uh, the router? Can he identify the router? Does he even know what the router is? Yeah, that's, that's the problem. problem. Bingo. Yeah. And yeah. and plus, they put a new router in. There's old boxes back there, and there's things behind the TV. And God, well, there yeah. is. And there's no I mean, way to ping. I'm he having... could just unplug everything there and replug it back in. That's true. Who's that's his good. internet service provider? Uh, whatever Bright House became in Optimum. So. Uh, I would call them on his behalf, explain he's 94. They can tell right. you if his router is on. Oh, okay, good. Oh, that's what, okay, right, thank you. That's what I need to find out. So they can ping it. Yeah. Okay. Pretty sure. Probably and, uh, privacy fanatics will stop me from doing that, but that's fine. <laughs> and then, uh, so that will give you at least the knowledge that's, they can even tell you if they see traffic coming and going. They'll have some idea if it's working. And okay, then, it, and then you go from the other end. You you have to walk him through the seven. Well, no, OSI what I'm what I'm looking layers. to do is to send him a machine that is dumbed oh, down. That's a good idea. To nothing. That's a good idea. Yeah. So anyway, thank yeah, you, so thank call, you for the for the moment. I of, would call Spectrum and just say, "Hey, can, my dad, ninety four, he can't figure it out. Could you just tell me? Can you ping? Are his you router? seeing anything? Yeah, are you seeing anything? <laughs> they can see. I don't know if the router and modem are separate. They certainly can see the modem, and I think they could probably see the router as well. They, they would be so I did a, um, a Publix uh, Instacart air order this. for him. This is the tweet I was talking about. That's yeah, it was, so it was great. Uh, so so my father was, no, 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 I'm fine. I get out. No, 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 no. I had to argue with him five times. And I said, I know you're fine, Pa. I don't know about the person next to you in the store. No, you're not going out. And he's deaf as a tree stump. So I had to go out on the deck. The whole neighborhood knows. And we live on three acres. The whole neighborhood knows. I'm, <laughs> no, Pa! So finally I convince him and then I have to put on the order and we know what he has. He said the same thing for 10 years. So we just make the list uh, my wife, my sister and me. And then we go through and then this great Mohammed is in the store and he's texting me and he says, uh, you know, I asked for paper towels. No, 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 no paper towels. And he had to up me for the grapefruit. This is, I've never done this before. And, and then he said, by the way, in the text, Costco has toilet paper. <laughs> <laughs> it was just great. And good old Muhammad, you know, got the food to my father, I think. 
And and it's pretty amazing what you can do. Thank you, Internet. Yeah. Makes it possible. Yeah. Uh, it is, a, it is um, sad to say, uh, uh, an example of privilege, however. We are, oh, we, yes. We are fortunate that we can we can do that. And I get a farm Absolutely. box delivered on Fridays, and Lisa uses Instacart. But uh, I, In New York now, the suppliers for the high-end restaurants, since they don't have restaurants, are now delivering to homes. Oh, yeah. So you, if you've you got money, mondo. If you've got yeah, money, you can, you can live fine. You Minimum have a house, you can have food. Uh, but look at the disproportionate number of African Americans who are dying. Uh, it's a huge disproportionate. It's terrible. It's terrible. Chicago is uh, 30% African-American, 70% African-American deaths. And it's the people, it's, sadly, it's the people who actually make our life livable, yes. who are on the front lines, who are not getting well paid, uh, who probably don't get paid well enough to do, you know, to get their own groceries delivered. And don't get good health care and, yeah. and live in pollution. And you so, know, this, this is a story of inequity that it's gonna, we're going to have to dig as, into for years and years. Somebody said to me, maybe it was you. Um, what we're really going to see and what we are seeing is uh, the inequity in our societies uh, really yeah. rearing its ugly head. Yep. So, Do you think that's actually going to change? Any? I mean, I feel like we've been seeing this forever. You so, know, I read a great article by a historian of the French Revolution who said, you know, this is exactly what it was like <laughs> <laughs> just before they stormed the Bastille. Uh, well, so. and... That that's, I mean, look at if we have. I don't wish that on anybody. That get, you do not. Yeah, but look what happened in Wisconsin. Uh, oh no! I, I un, mean, I look at this and I'm like, that there, yes. the 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 state Supreme Court and then the federal Supreme Court told Wisconsiners, yeah, you should you should risk your life because that's the only way you're going to get to vote. Un uh, unbelievable. It's just and and so yeah, I can see. I mean, I don't want a revolution. <laughs> I'm not voting for it, but. Uh, well, the, the it, poor Bernie, everything that he's been screaming about, the need for it is now evident and he yeah. drops out, you know, and I'm, I'm not, I was never a Bernie fan and never a Bernie voter, but I give him a lot of credit for having changed the, um, he changed the conversation. Yeah, and he really it is, had, it'll, really. it is interesting that, <laughs> I mean, it, I don't know what it accomplishes, but it does show <laughs> everything he was talking about. Yep. Um, yeah, I don't know. It's a. This is part of the. The only way that I can handle my anxiety is by, you know, mental exercises like projecting out. Well, what do you think? What do you think that means? What is it gonna? Should I? Should I start a garden? <laughs> do I need to learn how? To, I did buy a sewing machine. Yes, you should start a garden. I should start because a garden. It's super easy. And there's nothing wrong with that, and right? It's a good thing to have. One way or yeah, the other. Yeah, I mean, it's worst good. case. Yeah. Worst case scenario, you'll grow some herbs. Whenever you need them, you can just go and get them, and it'll be perfect. Yeah. No, worst case, case scenario, scenario is I'll try to learn canning, tomato. and I'll poison the family. <laughs> okay, canning is advanced level magic. Yeah, don't. So you know, I'm don't gonna, start there. I'm going to learn sewing, though. <laughs> you know, and I'm going to make you all masks. Twit masks. Leo masks. Yeah, twit masks. Leo, my face on it, so it uh, I can unlock your phone. Yeah, I've been trying to breathe through the fez. It doesn't work very well. No. I, I don't have any elastic fabric, so I've got other fabric, and I have a sewing okay, machine, but I can't. Forgive me for this. I'm not interested in the answer, but if you happen to ever wear pantyhose, they make an excellent, excellent elastic for your masks. Huh. Uh. Ooh. I don't know if you do or don't, and I don't want to know. I'll send you some of mine, Stacey. Yeah, I wear them. I, I like, love them. I, They're very warm. I don't have pantyhose, but <laughs> I know I if this had happened. So, yeah, tights would work, right? There's an elastic, okay. right? Okay. Yeah, there you go, tights. What about what about the hair bands? The hair. I have things. seen uh, no sew mask uh, patterns that do in yep. fact use hair ties. Hair ties. That's what you call it. I mean, I have a sewing machine, so I can actually sew it. Do you know I how to sew? Don't. Yeah. I'm going to get my mom to teach me because I bought a sewing machine without any skills at all. I never learned. <laughs> okay. What's the what's the June oven version of a sewing machine? It's not an expensive sewing machine. <laughs> they, do, they don't have those, but I wish they did because wouldn't it be awesome if you could set oh. your pattern? They do actually have. No, I they will have say embroidery these, machines, automatic embroidery Yeah, they machines. have these amazing yeah. computerized embroidery yeah. machines, and yeah. my mom has one. Like multi-thousand-dollar so cool. machines. I know. They're I know. so cool. 
So I mean, of, like you watch them work and you're like, so wow. I got a, a kind of a portable machine. I think it was 300 bucks. It, it was Dr. Mom's sister. So Dr. Mom in the chat room says, well, my sister is not is kind of business has been slow in Santa Monica at the uh, sewing store. So huh. you could buy one from her. I said, I'll deal. So she shipped it out to me. It's sewingarts.com. I got a little $300 uh, sewing machine. She says, very good. It's made by Bernina. And, um, oh, yeah, that's my yeah, yeah. It's a good brand. And uh, she's going uh, to throw in some batik fabric, I think. It's called the Burnett. And uh, so it is not the June oven. But then, you know, the real reason I did this, Jeff, my mom, yeah. my whole life growing up, my mom was is all about textiles and, and is an excellent sewer. And really? I thought I would get her on FaceTime and say, Mom, I got a sewing machine. Can you sh teach me how to sew? I thought that'd be a fun thing to do. My mother would have just said, no, you're too dumb. <laughs> you're hopeless. <laughs> and then Explains a lot. And then, and then there'll be a practical side of it because I can make masks for everybody. You can also do things like, I don't know, make... Buttonholes. It's got a buttonhole. Pillows. Yeah. Well, no, I mean, I just... Oh, you could make buttonholes, This I thing guess. has a buttonhole foot and a zipper foot. I could. Oh, a zipper foot. A zipper foot. I just foot. like saying zipper foot. Zipper foot. So a buttonhole Did you and see a the mask foot. for people who work with the uh, hearing impaired? It's got a little plastic uh, window. Window, yeah. yeah. Yeah, that's cute. That's cool. That's cute. Oh, that's sweet. So I should ask both of you, because both of you were in, uh, you know, Seattle's at a tough time, and... I think Seattle's kind of flattened the curve, right? It's we're get, we're great. Yeah, but now uh, Jeff's in New Jersey, of course, which is the epicenter. Not uh, great. Not yep. great. Not great. How, how can you tell? I mean, does it feel different? Well, my wife won't let me go out, so I have no idea. But yeah. she she goes out and and comes back exhausted. Is she going just to from work? Tension of it. Hmm? Is she no, going? not work. No, no, no. She's she's going to once once every ten days. She hits a different store. Yeah, so we this shop. week, yeah, this week she she tried to go to Trader Joe's and and uh, it was closed because they were disinfecting it because somebody there oh. apparently had it. Oh my! Um, you know we're we're of an age where we can get to the the senior hours. Joe in our chat room says he's in New York City, and all he hears all day is sirens because there's no more sirens. traffic noise, but the noise, but the sirens are yeah. are going. Which reminds me of 9/11. Yeah. Uh, a UK mm. judge has given uh, Google a Sophie's Choice. This is in that case, which I think we've all agreed is not a very good or just case. The Foundem case. Foundem sued Google saying, you are prioritizing your, your results over ours and you put us out of business, darn you. Uh, now Google is being told you've got to give your ranking algorithms to Foundem's selected expert. Oh, Foundem gets to select them, not the judge. Foundem has already selected them. Oh, Jesus! Philip Klockner. Yes. Uh, he uh, Philip Klockner <laughs> is an SEO consultant, and Google said the. <laughs> The integrity of Google's ranking processes relies upon all webmasters or website owners having the same degree of access to information about Google's ranking. This will be no longer be the case if information of this kind is made available to some individuals who actually offer commercial services to assist companies to improve their search rankings. Jesus. I think they have some. And by the way, how do you judge it? What do you, what do, you do? Pile on 25 million lines of code onto his desk? Well, that's uh, how, uh, actually what, what Google. What is this process? That's what Google did in the Foundum case. They presented um, a stack of code, some documents, court, court exhibits filed by Google engineers, and Foundum said, "Well, what are we supposed to supposed to do with these?" So the judge said, um, "You, we got, we got to, you got to have an expert look at these, and we're going to let the plaintiff choose the expert." That's awful. The, yeah, and Google is, I mean, right. In this case, I'm like, yeah, judge probably should be able to talk about that or select your expert um, and let the two sides fight over this because, yeah, not great. Yeah, the judge no. said, you take it or leave it. You either withdraw the evidence or agree to let Klockner read the algorithm. Klockner, by the way, was a consultant to both Travago 
and Visual oh, Meta, Jesus. both of whom had previously complained to the EU about Google's anti-competitive practices. Uh, he would be given legal permission to enter two so-called confidentiality rings where he could read unredacted copies of Google's algorithm documents and talk to lawyers about them. Uh, he, the judge said, I'm going to give Google a reasonable time to figure out what your response is, but you don't, you don't, those to an unreasonable are, request. Yeah, it's an unreasonable request. You either withdraw the evidence or you let uh, what's what's the expert. what's the maximum at stake for Google? I mean, is it just is it just money or is there a precedent that could be damaging? That's an interesting uh, question. I don't see. I'm looking at a register article. Um, this has been Which going is, on. Why do they call full. Google the chocolate factory? Because uh, I didn't just, get that at all. Because of Charlie and the chocolate factory. Charlie and the chocolate factory. A secret. It's it's Willy Wonka's it. chocolate factory, like the secret candy. Oh, okay. Yeah. yeah, I spent way too long going. It's, what? That's a very register happening? thing. They like yes. jargony slang. No, I, I know they. Yeah, I know yeah. they come up with their cute little yeah. boffin names, whatnot. But I, I that one was just escaping me. <laughs> boffin is such but, a good word. I love boffin. Uh, yeah, it's like calling Apple the fruit company. Well, that at least makes that makes sense. Apple. <laughs> right, I understand. Yeah, um, they, I don't. They don't see damage. This has been going on since two thousand six. Wow. 2000. It's always been a ridiculous Jeez. Um, so I don't, I don't know what will happen. But, yeah, this is an example of – this is so difficult for Google. I don't know how Google – Google's got the patience of Job. I just don't know how they – No, they have a big legal team that still wants to be paid. Yeah, I mean, just, that's what that's this what is. That's what they do. That's why this I'm is... not a lawyer. But you know, were you ever going to go to law school? No. Yeah, oh, I was never, but because uh, first of all, <laughs> no. <laughs> first, you have to graduate college. That was a little bit of a roadblock. <laughs> but uh, but also, I did always think that I, you know, I watched the paper chase. I thought that the it was you know the fat it was fascinating thinking about legal arguments and thinking about the law. That was an intellectually wonderful process. But all the lawyers I knew were miserable, especially the young lawyers yeah, who yeah. were in the documents section in the basement of the building and just <laughs> like the worst. And uh, the only happy lawyers I know are former lawyers. Stacey, I uh, remember you said earlier on your show what you would have been if you weren't you. But what would you have been? A genetic engineer. Oh, nice. That's right. That's right. Well, boy, you'd I be you'd me. be on the talk I'd shows now, wouldn't you? That's nice. <laughs> I don't know. I mean, yeah, maybe. No, probably not. I, I think my career would have been very different. I probably would not be camera ready in any sort of way. I'm barely camera ready now. <laughs> have you seen Next Strain? It's, that? It's, is that it's a, a television show? G, no, NEXT Strain. It is dot org. It is phenomenal. It is checking every single strain of the COVID virus. Oh yeah, it, these are not I, mutations, I but these are. It's an open source project to harness the scientific and public health potential of pathogen genome data. So, are they sequencing it? Uh, yes, and then, and then they're and then they're tracking it. If you click on, I think the first link there. Yes, click on the first upper left link, latest data analysis, and there you will see the mapping wow. of the slight uh, variations. So you're in seeing the mutations the RNA. here. Is that that? And and it's not a full mutation, right? It's not like oh oh no, I'm going to get a different COVID. It hasn't gone that far, uh, but but you will see it against geography. You see it against the sequence, and then also where did that allows you to track where they went and came from. Wow. Just right. fascinating. Oh, I get it. Yeah, because you could say, oh, yeah. Oh, that's right. Of course. You could say, oh, that this is one that particular. That seen in Italy, and then it, I saw it in New York. I have read about this, uh, the, the work that they're doing. That's fascinating. There's a brilliant young woman named Emma Hodcroft. Look at this map. Show this map, uh, John, because this is a overtime map showing it's actually the part on the left. Is there? Are you zoomed in a little bit? Can you zoom out? It's the part on the left that's really interesting. because That showing, also feeds the part on the right. It's showing you what's happening. I, that's what I mean. The part on the right, yeah, yeah is showing the spread globally as via the genomes. I'm, let this me could go, have been you, Stacey. Let me go back to the beginning. This is fascinating. So this is the end game. So here we are in Wuhan, China, and you're going to see based on the genetic information where it went first. I think Thailand was the first uh, place it went. Yeah. Wow, look at this. Uh-oh, uh-oh. Where's that purple one on the right going? Oh, no. It looked, oh, then France. Oh, oh, it went to the United States. Now the U.S. is giving it. Oh, this is really interesting. Isn't this fascinating? This is really interesting. Up to Canada. So they the have, U.S. back to England. 
right now they have it looks like four or five genomes or f uh I'm trying to interview her for my series. Yeah, really interesting. Really interesting. And she's a, she's a you know a, a, she's not alone there's a team of people but she's been speaking about it. She's a you know young postdoc. And to be working on this kind of stuff is just got to be fascinating. This is nextstrain.org. Nextstrain.org. Fascinating. The other thing, when I'm talking to my scientists, that's that's. So I talked to one today, who, uh, uh, Angela Rasmussen from Columbia School of Public Health, and she's been involved in other um, epidemics. But she said this is the first one where we have uh, preprints. That is to say, scientific papers that are published before they're peer reviewed, and that gets in mm. some trouble, like the famous one about about the hydrochloroquine. But uh, the flow of data and information and theories for the for the for the scientists is invaluable. And um, though there have been a few bad ones, uh, all in all, uh, they seem to agree that this is incredibly valuable to have this flow of information possible. Um, and you see the things like next strain then become possible too because people are, are are sharing that. Scientists are trying to get each other to pledge to be open about their data. I saw one of those. It's phenomenal time. Awful, it is. I mean, it's it's, it's Sorry, open Stacey. source. No, I'm just going to say it's open source science and really exciting um, because it, it does bring up this idea that when you get a bunch of smart people all trying to talk to one another and, and fix things – that's awesome. I will also say it shows the importance of having some sort of central body to manage the information or manage like the implementation. It feels very tough watching like some of the ventilator efforts or some of the other efforts that are happening. Yep, Just everyone's yep. basically like, I have an expertise in this. Let me find a group that I can work with to solve the problem. You mean like and then Elon the logistics Musk donating CPAP yeah. machines as ventilators? You mean like that? <laughs> Not just like that. And I, I wish I could remember where I saw the article. It was someone talking about like one of the COVID-19 hackathons. And he's like, this is all well and good. But the next step is figuring out like, how do we do delivery? If we make these ventilators, you know, how do we tell doctors how to use them? How do, do they need the approval? How do we, you know, so there's still the need to have some sort of logistics element there that's usually done better mm -hmm. when it's a bit centralized and i don't know it's it's kind of showing how we can build up highly flexible open you know problem solving architectures and if we can then flip it and focus on the ones you know and get the actual solutions that work to people that's a very new way of doing business it's it's really yes, it a crucible for changing the way we do business or it could be that was a lot so okay. i'll put son jake uh put this in the rundown chat um put together a, a list a week or so ago of, of some of the the open source projects that are out there and that and that list keeps growing and and yeah mm -hmm. you're right some of it is hey kids let's put on a show in the barn and everybody be better tomorrow uh but some of them were very serious and um but uh uh is it this Jennifer is, Palka? Is that her first name? John, right here. Don't know. Um, we don't. I'm former, like, I don't know former, who you're talking about. Keep saying Jennifer more. Palka was the former deputy digital head in the Obama administration, I think. So she started something, bringing together companies just to be able to communicate and volunteer resources with each other. Um, there's there's one effort that says if you're a mathematician or a statistician and there are researchers who need some help, will you volunteer your time? Uh, you know, there's a lot of a lot of good efforts out there, but you're right, Stacey. We 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 ain't gonna do this like Mickey and Judy putting on a show in the barn. We need the experts and we need the structure of institutions to make it possible. Can you not see my screen? And, and Jeff? I think we could do that. I just don't go. like. That's that's I, I son Jake, my son be, Jake's page. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Well. Sorry, Stacey. I agree. There's also no, should, no. I was, should be peer review and all I that. But say, I think the idea of getting the information out and presuming that the experts who are looking at the information and using the information have the ability to vet it, you know, at least right. informally and say, well, that's not a great study. There was no, you know, 
Yeah, the, the original hydrochloroquine was like N16, no right. control, no control nothing. Group. Yeah, ended up was, being published in a journal right. for which the author was the editor. <laughs> um, uh, and huge there, problem. Yeah, there's but, a little asterisk. Whenever it's not peer-reviewed, there, there should always be an asterisk. Oh, there is. There you is. would presume is. the experts would look at it and go, well. But okay. the problem is what you can't count on is it goes out of that into a Twitter feed. Somebody did a story on this last week into Trump's head and out his mouth again and again and again and again and again. Right. And that's when you get to the to the uninformed um, use of preprint information. But uh, but but the, the the scientists are telling me no, it's worth it to have this information. Yeah, that's gonna you know look. There's stuff like that's gonna happen. This is for you, Stacey. <laughs> Google Duo. Sorry. As you know, sometimes uh, calls drop out. Google is trying autocomplete for speech in Google Duo. A little scary. What? Yeah, Ooh, that's that, terrible. That, that is, <laughs> oh, that is that is crazy. This um, is deep mind because I'm just trying it. to envision. Yeah, and yeah, they're trying I to have auto complete on my email. Yeah, they're trying to. They'd even duplicate the speaker's uh, tone and voice and all of that. And I'd artificial rather they didn't because <laughs> if they messed it up, then at least people bingo. Know. That's the problem. It's not auto complete because you have control over auto complete still. Yeah, this is auto presume. Well, they, according to this article in the MIT Technology Review, <laughs> Google's already doing it. <laughs> Maybe most of the time it's not a sentence or a word even. It's just a a little packet. bit, a packet or two, right? Maybe it smooths out uh, the sound a little bit. It wouldn't be yeah, whole words. Yeah. yeah. I would guess that's I'm going to hope it. that's the case. Yeah. They call it packet. Because otherwise it could get weird. Packet loss. Well, it's on duo, Stacy. So you could end up with a major family feud. <laughs> Stacy, I, 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 I heard didn't you say, say that. that. This is called packet loss concealment. Yeah, I think it's really based on you know one or two packets. So it's a, uh, instead of I, I, you know what you wouldn't even know it's happening if it if it were that quick. Could they <clears throat> like filter? I would like a better filter that like gives my lips some color and maybe like smooths the flyaways in my hair so I look presentable <laughs> well, enough. And doesn't make That's you really so damn it, pink. So well, here Jeff, we go. I don't know okay. About that. So uh, this is an example of it. <clears throat> I'll, this is uh, this is with a 60, 60 millisecond packet loss. I don't know exactly what we're going to hear, but I'm going to play it. Oh, you're not getting my audio. Hold on a sec. You always got to check that before uh, I got to get my sound my sound mixer up. We always got to check that John before the show. John can't come over to plug in anything. No, it's not Munchkins that. from the country of the Gillikins. At the foot of the mountain that separated the country of the Munchkins from the country of the Gillikins, the path divided. So, At you, the foot of the so you can hear the dropouts there. Here's the fixed. Mm -hmm. At the foot of the mountain that separated the country of the Munchkins from the country of the Gillikins, mm -hmm. the path divided. Still still not great. Well, mother, said the young student, looking up with a shade of impatience. Oh, we've all heard that, that kind of robotic buzzy sound. Let's see what it does here. Mm -hmm. Well, mother, said the young student, looking up with a shade of impatience. Okay. It's a little better, right? <laughs> it's a little better. All right, let's try it with 120 millisecond. This is twice as much packet lost. Next came Olive's turn to help in the ceremonies. Oh, I hate it when that happens. Next came Olive's turn to help in the ceremonies. See, that's a big improvement, Ooh. right? Oh, that is. That is, okay. Here's another one. To, they, to, well, what, what could the word help have been? It could have been. Yeah, no, they're not replacing words. It's just little bits of sound, I think, or cleaning it up. They little would, bits of that sound. They might do so, too, and that would make you a great deal of trouble. They would think that they might do so too, and that would make you a great deal of trouble. So I honestly, I bet that would make you a great big troll. Troll. Ben. This is already happening in Duo, according to this Google uh, blog post. So I think okay. that makes it sound a lot better. It does. Well, some of them sounded better than others. Right. Well, but yeah, still better than nothing. That is the way the world works. Yeah. Some things work better than others. Yeah. Oh, I think that's pretty <laughs> impressive. And it could get better and better. Yeah. You could see that. One of the problems we're seeing uh, uh, with, again, income inequality, about half of the students who are being sent home <clears throat> to do online school aren't, aren't even checking in. They're just yeah, not doing awful. it. And some of that is because they don't have the way, uh, means to do it. They don't have the computer. They don't have My the university, internet. CUNY, uh, had to delay restarting classes because they had to go buy 33,000 laptops. 
So Google is wow. donating free Chromebooks and 100,000 mobile hotspots for rural California students. This is a little smaller than the uh, the, the CUNY purchase, 4,000 Chromebooks. Uh, but they're also giving them Internet access. So I will say that I noticed with Anna's school, which is a private school in a fairly decent well-off area of the country. Um, a lot of kids complained that they couldn't, they didn't have bandwidth access when in fact, spoiler alert, they did. <laughs> so convenient. the school actually, convenient. They my sent dog ate the internet, can't do yeah. it. Uh -uh. They were like, it's like my father. Yeah. They're like, could you please tell us what computer equipment you have, what bandwidth you have access to in your house? Um, and they explained that a higher number than they thought would need it does seem to need it. And then they came back and they were like, okay. So they did end up buying laptops for two or maybe three students. Um, but they, they were getting like a 40% a rate of kids who were like, yeah, I can't participate. <laughs> so I'm just throwing that out there. Like, mm. I, I don't think that that's the case in most of these examples, but. The dog ate my uh, spectrum. <laughs> yeah. Uh, as if Facebook didn't already know enough about you, now they're going to know your most intimate details, Stacey Higginbotham. They have launched an app for couples to talk to each other, to keep private. a photo diary, check in on each other's moods. Private. Oh, it's private. Oh. Oh, yes. Is it? <laughs> yeah, well, I'm not on Facebook, so it's It's built as a, me. quote, private space, end quote. I'll, Poor Andrew's been sending you messages and you just don't see them. Yeah. You don't that even, happens in our real life, too. <laughs> you don't even have to have a Facebook account, although you are subject to Facebook's data rules, meaning the data people provide can be used for ad targeting. So be careful what you say. Honey, I think I'm pregnant. Could really launch a whole barrage of ads you don't want to see. It's Unless called, they were actually pregnant. Yeah, well, maybe you would want to see them. See, that's why... Good targeting ads. Tuned, a new app for couples, a private space. Now, I've used these. Lisa and I have used these. We used uh, Couple for a long time, which I really liked. There was another one called Avocado. Um, I'm, not, I'm not against this idea. It is nice for Lisa and I to have uh, a, a private space where we can just, you know, exchange stuff. Do you, I mean, not like I'm not text? against this. Well, texts aren't. Yeah, but text, this has more, you know, you got a daily diary. You can say, how do I feel today? You can exchange music, love notes. I mean, it's a little more uh, tuned toward the kinds of conversations you would want to have. Huh. <laughs> Color Stacy dubious. You've never, you've like, never used it. Huh. You just use text messages. I think we just must converse so, I mean, well, I don't want to read my husband's diary, like <laughs> and I certainly don't. I mean, we and we're we're not. We're probably not the targeted market because both of us are very oh. practical. So, oh, you're we're practical. Not, oh. I know. Who's, I'm like, who's the more romantic of you? Oh, Andrew for sure. He's so well. He's not so romantic, he but he's definitely you flowers on this app and stuff like that. It, it, Okay, this is how practical I am. When he's <laughs> when he brings flowers home, I'm like, damn, now I gotta cut them and put them in a vase. So now he has to do that for me. Oh, I mean, my wife I'm says just... I'm allergic. Wow. You guys are such curmudgeons. Wow. Who's the more I'm romantic? Not a curmudgeon. Than you? I'm just lazy. Lisa I have says other things to I should be more romantic, but I think I'm pretty darn romantic. <laughs> so I don't know. She just wants more romantic. Is she romantic? I yeah. What does it mean to be romantic? I mean, what is it? What is it like? Or what Pushy, do you hard do? Hit. You know, Needy, just in the middle like, of the day, you just like, send a little note with a a, a picture of a of a, a rhinoceros and say, "I'm getting horny for you," like that. <laughs> yeah, I'm. I'm never gonna do that. <laughs> no, that, that's 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 one step from the divorce court. <laughs> I mean, uh, not I mean, that I've ever I, done that. I'm just as an example thinking. Uh, don't do it, Leo. Just no, a little advice. No, don't do it. Don't do that one. Don't do it. Okay. All I right, think I got a topic I want to talk for about. Dinner. That's a good one. Okay. Yeah. Is that romantic? Lisa last yesterday said, I'm going to order 
us dinner at our favorite restaurant, which has never done takeout in the past, but does now, of course. And uh, and she ordered me my favorite dish, and it was ready for me when I got home. It was cute. It was nice. That's romantic. Ooh. That's okay. thoughtful. Yeah. All right, Jeff, you have a topic. So we need Kevin here. I'm I'm saddened because I the only thing that was going to brighten my day was one day key dollars. And I was going to be able to buy something new and a toy, mm -hmm. even though I had a little excuse to do so. $1, but I'm not thinking. Kevin um, Tofel put up together the uh, reviews of the Samsung Galaxy Chromebook. There's one big problem. Two, actually, it seems. Besides the price. Battery. And the and battery's heat. terrible. Terrible, it seems. Oh. Terrible. How disappointing, because we saw it at CES. It is gorgeous. The Chromebook? Yeah, the, the we're talking yeah, about the Samsung, the, Galaxy. The, the bright red Samsung Galaxy Chromebook. Which I Ooh, quite bright. Oh, that's pretty. Yeah, it is. Let me. Uh, okay, but it has terrible battery life and a 4K display. Oh, that's why it has terrible battery. That's why. Life. Yes, because yeah. they gave it a giant display. I'm going to go to uh, Kevin's uh, review. So Kevin, here. Kevin rounded up the um, yeah reviews. Yeah, they, they, I was disappointed when I saw the battery life, and it is a th it does start at thousand dollars, but that's like the Pixel Book. It's a two oh, in one. Kevin also says it's the too Verge. hot because it doesn't have a fan. Yeah, it's too hot. Uh, the Verge claimed eight, or the Samsung claimed eight hours. Verge got four hours, 20 minutes on a charge. Yeah. Well, but the Verge, if they put That's a movie on it, it went a long, longer way. Yeah, it's too bad because it really is pretty, isn't it? It um, is. I think the 4K yes, is kind of unnecessary. That's for what I book. look for in my computing equipment. Is it? Is it pretty? I do because I'm romantic. Oh. Yeah. I'm See, you are romantic. too practical, Stacey. We're the we're we're the computer romantics over here. Yeah. Okay. Uh, a number of them said, the, "Look at the uh, Asus uh, Chromebook Flip. That's probably a better." It was not red. Buy. It's not red. No. I like the red. There's something about red anodized red aluminum. It's just gorgeous. Just pretty. And really thin. Yeah. Thinnest. The thinnest ever. Let me go back to the uh, Verge picture because that's a. Much prettier picture. They have nicer photography. They have really pretty pictures. I don't know. Uh, I don't know. I don't know. I think yeah, really so no, I think one the of the virtues no. of Chromebooks is long battery life and low cost, and it doesn't do either. Well, this I have doesn't my, beat my, either of those things. Yeah. My Pixelbook was expensive. That wasn't but cheap wonderful. either. Yeah, it's wonderful. Yeah. Uh, hmm. Well. A wheel. A I don't get putting a 4K screen on it, to be honest. I think that might have been a tactical error. Well, it's also a tablet, so you could, you know, watch oh, your movies. Oh, that's why. That's why you want to watch that's movies why. on it, 4K movies. That's pretty. Mm. You know, and then my use of it as a tablet would have been on airplanes. <laughs> right. So much for that. Right. You ain't going nowhere, buddy. Going nowhere. So, yeah. so both, I think it's Delta and United now have extended status through January 2022. Oh, Alaska did it through 2021, I think. Well, just January is kind of the end of their year is all, but yeah. Oh. So have, has anybody played with the uh, YouTube uh, TikTok competitor? Shorts? Oh, is it out? Nope. I nope. thought that they announced oh, it, but I didn't think it's... Oh, okay. No, I don't know. I don't know either. That is how interested I am in it's making small, the, the, short videos. <laughs> yeah, exactly. The, in, the information says plans. Plans. All right. Speaking of shorts, have you played with Quibi? I have not paid for it. No. Well, you don't have to because it's three months free. Well, but then I'll forget. And then no, no, I don't fall for that, Leo. <laughs> I don't fall for that stuff. Um, I, actually, it's I, I just, you don't use iPhones. It's one of the things Apple does so nicely on the iPhone. If you delete the app, it says, "Now, do you want to delete the subscription too?" Which is a, a very nice feature, I think. Google sends you an email before it charges you. As a reminder, well, in that's four true. days, you're going to get this. Yeah. To fix it, yeah. go here. Yeah. Um, I do appreciate that. I watched, So we watched Quibi. Actually, we did a big review of it on uh, iOS today. If you want to see at the end of the show, it was my app cap. It does a really one really cool thing. I'll do it again here, and uh, I'll show you on this. Because it's, by the way, the negative is you can't put it on anything. You can't play it. You can't airplay it. You can't, it, you can't put it on your computer. You can only, you can only, it's really made for an iPhone. Um, and, but every, they have, shows are all about seven minutes, but each one begins with an ad. So somebody said, you know, all they did is they took a half hour, an hour show, cut it up in seven minute chunks and put an ad in front of each one. So it's like the ad breaks. 
But watch this. So this, when I turn it sideways, kind of, it's kind of neat. It kind of automatically. But Five years ago, I would have said, "Ooh." Yeah, I know. It's not enough. <laughs> this is. I was a like, show. they have mastered auto rotate. This Yay. is, a, but it's better than that because they've shot it in a way, and, and in theory, their technology will allow you them to give you two different views of the same shot as you rotate it. This is an interesting show. It's a, there, there are a lot of reality shows. There's a Judge Judy, except that it's Chrissy Teigen instead of Judge Judy. This is a cooking reality show called Dish Mantled, in which they take a dish and they uh, pulverize it and fire it in a cannon at two chefs wearing special protect some PPE. Incredibly stupid. And then, the, well, it gets better. And then the chefs have to taste it off the floor, off their shoes, off whatever they could taste it on, figure out what it is. And then they That's have a pre COVID show. And they, Jesus. And then they have a half hour to make it. And then whoever gets the closest, the judges taste, taste it. And then the, whoever gets the closest, ready, get ready. They're going to fire the, the oh, goo. That's wasteful. Oh, <laughs> So it looks better in widescreen. Oh, thanks. You've just convinced me that I'm missing nothing. <laughs> There's one called Murder House, where the, a house where a horrific seven people were murdered by a little old lady who wanted their social security <laughs> checks and then buried in the backyard. And this couple live there and they say, yeah, it's kind of creepy in the backyard. So they bring in a designer couple to do a makeover. Uh, there's oh, one this is the Murder House flip one? Yeah. Yeah. I read about that. I was like, this is like, it is like those 30 Rock TV, like Milf Island and all the 30 they're Rock TV shows. They're all 30 Rock like, parody shows. They're, yeah. they're real. Punked is back, but instead of Ashton Kutcher uh, doing, uh, playing Alan Funt, doing Candid Camera, they've got Chance the Rapper playing Ashton Kutcher, playing Alan Funt. Doing if they get Candid the rural Camera. juror, I might watch. The rural juror. The rural juror. The, rural juror. <laughs> the most dangerous game... <laughs> There's news on here. Wait, I'm sorry. What is the most dangerous game? Because isn't that hunting people? Uh, it's exactly that. It's the same. It's basically a remake of the most dangerous game. Uh, but it has uh, Christopher, uh, uh, what's his, uh, Welt, Wild, the guy, the the great German actor who was in Inglorious Bastards, played the Nazi in the Inglorious Oh, uh, 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 Weitz. Weitz. Right, right. He's so good. Oh, he is so good. So there oh. he is chewing the scenery. In widescreen or in portrait mode? Widescreen or <laughs> portrait mode? So they, Meg Whitman, former CEO of eBay and governor, uh, California governor uh, candidate. Uh, when I think cool new entertainment, I, I think, think Meg, Meg Whitman. Whitman. And Jeffrey Katzenberg yeah. of SKG, former Disney executive. When I think old Hollywood, I think yeah. Jeffrey Katzenberg. Yeah, raised $1 billion with a B dollars to do this, and they've poured every penny into the production value. Very high production value. Lots of celebrity names. They've got LeBron James, Chrissy Teigen. John Legend makes an appearance on the Chrissy Teigen first episode. Uh, so it's all nicely done. $5 with ads, $8 without ads a month. Three months free. I don't know. What do you think? This To me, this looks like Hollywood saying, this is what Hollywood's looking at YouTube going, how do we get some of that money? Yeah, but I mean... Do they? What do they have on the data optimization? Because this is designed to be done on the go, right? So, yeah, so you can't really, you can't. It doesn't really have an iPad uh, experience, and you can't play it on a computer, and you can't airplay it. You can't. I'm watching this, and I'm saying, "Oh, honey, you got to see it. I want to show it to her." Yeah, that's, I, I can't project it. I have. She has to come over and look over my shoulder. That's. Listen, I mean, I just, I just think about like. I mean, because I, I hang out with tweens, and they, they totally like share YouTube videos back and forth, like it's no tomorrow. Um, so, but I'm like, would they share? I think this might I be for what her the, or, or her, maybe people a little older than her high school and college. Yeah. Right? Cause like that, I think what they, I mean, what they love is people being stupid, goofy. I well, mean, they the love YouTube, TikTok and vines. YouTube didn't say, okay, what could we do to get the kids? They just made a platform and a lot of people right. made a lot of stuff. Some of which really stuck and it wasn't any of the stuff Hollywood thought would stick. Right. Nobody, none of the YouTube stars. Yeah, no, no, no. Are Anybody who's a star at VidCon. Right. Not and at all. And it translates Hollywood. terribly. Do you right. remember Miranda? What's her name? Miranda Plays or whatever? No. Miranda. Yeah. Everybody, every time she's they, really annoyed. Hollywood plucks a YouTube star and makes tries to make them a TV star, it just. It's not awesome. Doesn't awesome. 
So I think that's one of the things most interesting about YouTube is how it became a, a kind of a Darwinian selection, uh, you know, natural selection for talent and produce something completely different than Hollywood, which used the opposite process. You know, they thought of what people would want to watch. And so this and is And maybe this there's demand that. for that. Well, I there mean, is. Do you, it, More people. I mean, I don't know. Who does who has bigger viewership, Hollywood or YouTube? I don't know. No, I'm not thinking that, but I'm thinking like do I when I want to watch scripted awesome content unless I'm stuck on an airplane, I don't watch it on my phone. So right. I'm like do I want to watch something right. Even if it's silly, but do production, I guess, does production value right. in paying for it, does that matter as much on a phone screen? And am I going to, do I get enough value of watching that in line at the grocery store? Uh, I don't know. A lot of money invested in this. We'll see. So I'm trying to see how many people watch YouTube in a, in a week or a month versus how many people watch movies. I guess you have to include TV in that. It wouldn't work. No. I would. I feel All like. I feel like YouTube's bigger now, but maybe not. I don't know. I'm so sorry. Total number of monthly active users That's on fine. YouTube Yawn is two billion. You That's meaningless. Too. It's okay. John no, Krasinski. I'm not bored. I'm just sleepy. Yeah, you need oxygen. John, that's what I always tell people. People go, "Why are you yawning? Are you bored?" And I say, "No, no, no. I'm thinking so hard. I need more oxygen." They don't buy it either. I was like, I'll try that. But I'm really just, <laughs> John Krasinski, I, he time. was on The Office, the cute guy in The Office. Everybody loved him. Uh, then now he's in Amazon Prime. He's a Tom Clancy action hero. Uh, mm -hmm. He created a YouTube channel like one week ago. Uh, he already has more than a million subscribers. And I think his first video has like 4 million downloads. It's called Some Good News. That's an example of going in the other direction. And I think because he's such a beloved star. He also, I mean, he's also a really good director. He did The Quiet Place. Oh, that's right. And Ooh. that was exceptional. That's a good point. Yeah, so, that's yeah. That's a good point. And this is this is very much quarantine humor that he's doing here. He's doing, <laughs> well, that's going to be a whole new genre, isn't it? No, I'm laughing. Oh, yeah. I'm like, oh, quarantine humor. Oh, quarantine dear. humor. Because he's in, see, see, he's in his... Office, it looks like his daughter made his sign behind him, SGN. He's using a desk lamp for his lights. Uh, he did at least put on a tie. Uh, but look at that. Eight million views. This is two days old. One and a half million subscribers. So th so it does go the other direction, right? It does. Yeah, I think you can be a famous celebrity and totally. Yeah. You like, bring your tribe. Yeah. 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 By the Why way, are we saying the tribe way, now? I say that it's maybe is it obnoxious? Are you telling me I'm obnoxious saying that? No, just a lot of my a lot of my people, especially the marketing people, they're Your like tribe? all about Your tribes. Tribe says and tribe? I'm like, yeah, Ugh. yeah. <laughs> I don't know what's happening there. So I'm upset that 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 sort of the TV people now have fake backgrounds. I really enjoyed seeing Casey yes. Hunt's. I agree. Color coded books, and now I agree. you know they, everybody's like, TV just just insists on going plastic. Yep. yep. I tweeted uh, this week that they've run out of COVID B roll, so we're seeing the same patient, the same thing a million times over and over and over. And rather, and they, 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 well, why don't we get rid of the B roll? It's pretty worthless. It's not informative. It's boring. But no, we have to have B roll because we're TV. <laughs> well, you do have to show people something. <laughs> Not, not when it's the same damn patient with the mask on. I've, see, I've seen that guy a you know, thousand times. The interesting times. thing about this Krasinski thing. It's a, uh, so getting on late night, you know, getting the Tonight Show, that's a big deal for a comic, right? Right. And there's only a handful of them, and there are a few shows. And, you know, if you're, if you're um, uh, you know, if you've got the Tonight Show, Jimmy Fallon made it. Like, that's he's made it, you know? But I look at somebody like John Krasinski, who might have had secret desires to have. I would have. Mm -hmm. I would have liked. To he'd do that. be good at it. He'd probably be very good at it. But nobody's offering it to him or whatever. So all of a sudden, with COVID, Jimmy Fallon's in his ten. Yeah. With with you know as cheesy as could be, suddenly John Krasinski is now. I could do that exact same thing and show them I'm better. Right. So in effect, this is John Krasinski's bid to be. Jimmy Fallon, he's even doing the same kind of. He's got an over-the-shoulder graphics. He's got, but it's the. It looks just like Jimmy Fallon's Tonight Show from his living room. 
So it's an interest. Look at that. He did the turn. He did the news turn. Why did you do that? To mock the news turn. To mock it, right? It's yeah. Right. Well, when you lower production values, everybody's it makes equal. It more accessible. Everybody's equal. <laughs> Even Hollywood stars who get millions of dollars a movie. I think it's fascinating. So I'm on the, I'm on the advisory board, the, the industry advisory board for VidCon, which was canceled, obviously. Yeah. And and you you know you think about what VidCon really does, and, and that's what YouTube does, is this it's but it's an entirely different view of celebrity, right? It's an intimate celebrity. I get to go have a selfie with this person I like. And and that's what this age enables. Right. So people people feel more connected, I think, with Krasinski than they feel with Jimmy Fallon. Absolutely. Fallon. Absolutely. And it's got to scare the hell out of NBC who's saying, well, we got Jimmy today, but we also have a bunch of 18, 25-year-olds who never watch TV. Ever. Right. Never. Not once. Ever. They watch it on YouTube. They, they, they pull YouTube. the segments. I mean, they do. They pull the segments that they like on YouTube True. and they share them. Yeah. Another reason they don't ever have to watch TV. <laughs> Actually, my son would just put it up on the TV. But it was, it was still YouTube. I think it's got to be terrifying, but I don't know. Uh, let's see. Let me do an ad, and then um, I will do the change log, I think. I was like, and then? And then? <laughs> and Ooh, then, then I got a whole week. No, I was just thrown a little bit because, you know, Steakums? Yes. <laughs> the microwave yes. snack. <laughs> you want to do that as a teaser? It's gotten apparently uh, pretty deep. Uh, it always has I, been. I wanted to say that. It's brilliant. Brilliant. Steakums brilliant. has gotten brilliant. Steakums is brilliant. They hired Albert Einstein as their social media manager or something. I don't know. <laughs> we'll talk about that in just a second. It's weird. Jeff Jarvis, he is a professor of journalism at the late lamented Town High Graduate School no, for Journalism. No, no, we're still there. And let's be clear, because because he listens and he and he and Craig he noted, listens. Craig, you know, you bet he does. You bet he does. Oh, I'm and sorry, he Craig. noted, I'm sorry, uh, that you were muffling the name. So let's I'm be sorry. very clear, Leo. What's the name of my was school? Was he mad about it? No, he was. He was, was teasing. Amused. It's the oh, we gotta, fabulous. We got to do it right now. Fabulous, Craig Leo, Newmark. What's the name of my school? What's the name of the school? The Craig Newmark. School Magic. for Graduate Journal Graduate School for Journalism oh, at the City University of New York. Yes. Craig was up. Newmark That's Graduate School of Journalism at the City University of New York. Yes, there you go. There you go. Craig, Craig Newmark. Newmark. Does Craig ever want to come on the show? He doesn't have to listen. Oh, to yeah, he does. Honest. Yeah, yeah. I, I talked, I talked to I screwed this up, I think. I talked to Karsten some time ago, and then I never I don't think I ever I my brother probably my fault. Craig. So Carson's not here, so I'll find a way to blame Carson. I've interviewed Craig. Um, Craig no, might remember can't me from way, way, way back when. Craig, he might no, remember I me. I won't blame but, Carson. Uh, uh, yeah, Craig would love to be. And now that we have, uh, we're back in the big room, could we have a guest? Yeah. No, because Leo can't hang out with a physical person. No, no, no I mean a be street guest. He'd be in an avatar. Oh, okay. I was like, no, Jeff, we can't risk Leo. Oh, no, no, I'm not risking Leo. <laughs> Or Craig, for that matter. Did, Craig oh, exactly. did it bother yeah. Craig when I called it the Craig Newmark School for Graduate Nerdalism? <laughs> no, I think you probably like that. Because Craig, Craig is a nerd. He's the king of them. This yeah. is why. So so when we when the name changed at the school, yeah. the swag, I never told you this, I should send it to you. The swag we made were Craig Newmark Graduate School of Journalism yeah. pocket protectors. Oh, perfect. Yeah. Perfect. Wait, no one yeah. uses a pocket protector now. Craig Doesn't is matter. such an amazing story. That he's a he Craig is. of Craig's List, if people don't know. We're kind of acting like everybody knows who he is. That's Craig of Craig's List. And what, do they still have like five people? <laughs> I think it's, it's uh, last last I knew some years ago, it was like 20. But it was, yeah, it was like nothing. billions of dollars. Just a handful of people. It's amazing. It's a great story. Our show today brought to you by, speaking of great stories, this is a great story. IT Pro TV. I met the founders of IT Pro TV uh, at the NAB conference many years ago. Uh, that's one of the good things about conferences I'll miss. Uh, I was doing a panel on how we did Twit and all of that and, you know, kind of guerrilla uh, production. And uh, Don and Tim had already been IT trainers, but in a classroom setting. And they saw what we did and they said, you know, that might be kind of an interesting way to do IT training. And IT Pro TV was born. IT Pro TV is the best way to get the skills you need to get a job in IT or to improve your skills so you can get a better job or make more money in ITV. And right now, 
because they're all virtual, they're streaming from their beautiful studios in uh, Gainesville, Florida. Uh, this is this is a time for them to shine a little bit. We've all been dealing with a lot, and IT Pro TV wants to offer your business a hand. IT Pro TV has solutions that'll let you do your training, your conferences, and AB. You should be listening. They can do it with incredible video, audio, expert advice. They've got six studios there. It's beautiful. They can set you up with a 100% remote conferencing setup so you can get training done for your company while maintaining social distance. You could do it from your house. They have the skills to do better than Jimmy Fallon. I mean, they could really make your conference incredible. You create your own training videos, customized training that meets your organization's needs. Get everything you need to create customized video training with the IT Pro TV custom content program. Leverage the power of video learning along with the convenience of a turnkey service. A lot of people are asking me, saying, you know, how do I set this up? Psh, go to the pros. They've got the tools to make your conference a success. Don't let working from home stop you from delivering the best content from your workforce, from planning to post-production. They've got all the services you need. You can execute your video strategy no matter what it is easily. They've got great hosts. You can use them. You can use your own host. You can use both. Uh, a lot of times what we find is you've got a great subject matter uh, expert. You get them on with one of their great hosts who can draw them out, and you're going to have an amazing event. You can, you can add your own subject matter experts for a powerful combination of on-camera experience, industry knowledge. They have several distinct HD studios. You can see kind of see some of them in the background on the video if you're watching the video. You could choose any of those studios, whether you want the warehouse. That's where they are right now. It's, I actually am really jealous. It's so beautiful, even as a fake elevator. That'll give you that kind of urban feel. But they also have a business set for a more corporate look. You can also get techie in the server room. Maybe we're in the server room. No, we're in the warehouse. They have a great server room, too. IT Pro TV are the experts in IT training and certification. In fact, they still have that great 30% off for the lifetime of your active subscription. But I did want to mention that Tim Broom and Don Puzzett uh, are, are there to help your organization. If you realize, man, what are we going to do? we got a conference coming up. we got an event coming up. They have the skills to do it for you. Start planning your business and training conference today with IT Pro TV. Go to itpro.tv. That's the website, itpro.tv slash twit2 and check it all out. There's the elevator there. I love that. And the staircase, that's the warehouse set, itpro.tv slash twit and the number two. A great place to get IT skills. And now in this time of need, they've also made it possible for you to use their facilities to help your business it pro tv build or expand your it career and enjoy the journey and thank you it pro tv it's been a great relationship the two uh, them and us and we just love tim and don and the game. can i ask you a question about that yeah so so they're advertising now not so much for the courses they have which i looked at and they're, they're still really yeah. high-end courses yeah i don't want to they're saying think they're not doing it but they're also right, right, doing, no, so they're doing stuff that. too. Yeah. But, but they saw the opportunity and the need here is companies want to do internal training right. and they have no idea how to do it. And so they say, okay, we can be a platform. That's for where you. they're better businessmen than me. Cause that's fascinating. I should have done that. But, um, uh, you know, I'm looking at it like, I'm like, Ooh, I could actually use yes. this right now. Yes. They yeah. can help you. I can set it up, Stacy. Just, you know, we'll, I, uh, we'll, we'll connect mm -hmm. you with Tim and Don. They're yeah. great people. Really great people. So I don't, what is a stakeum? <gasps> oh, I know this because the... my mom used to make the sandwich. It's pressed, processed meat, and it comes in sheets. So and it's my not mom actually steak sandwiches. It's not actually steak. with Velveeta cheese. Oh my god! It's it's oh. you're supposed to believe. Well, it's, it's like cheese steak, Dick. Yeah. Okay. It's, it's oh, okay. Thin, they I have. Uh, I, I probably should have been an inch taller. Here you go. Here's steak them. <laughs> now the Wall Street Journal. <laughs> Steakums are good. I, I had them as a kid too. Yeah, it's a nice. It's a, I mean, I love che cheese steaks. Okay, it's cheese steak. Got it. It's yeah. cheese. Well, yeah, that's what's what it became. Yeah, yeah, but yeah. It's, and it's some it's cheese. Not... No, none of that. None of that pepper crap on it. No, that's that's like oh, a wall. I love pepper crap. No, 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 no. You don't put the peppers on. You don't put the mushrooms on. It's cheese and onions, fried onions. But that's look, it. Look at that's this. The law. It's all your life. As allowed. I hover over there, I guess we can't, it's cut off at the top. But as I hover over, uh, well, let, let, here we could show this. Um, 
But as I hover over their, their Twitter thing, it says, well, let me show you their Twitter thing. Now, I saw an article in the Wall Street Journal that says Stakem is misinformation. But this is what? good information. Oh, it's good information. Yeah. In times of uncertainty and information, anecdotes are not data. Good data is carefully measured and collected information based on a range of subject-dependent factors, including but not limited to. This is like the scarecrow. <laughs> yeah. After he got his brain, <laughs> including but not limited to controlled variables, meta analysis, and randomization. <laughs> what is Stakem doing here? What is this? They, is wild. Isn't they it? have a history isn't of it? being a little fun. A this little is wet. more than fun, though. This is serious. We are a yeah. frozen meat brand posting ads inevitably made to misdirect people and generate sales. <laughs> so this is peak irony. But hey, we live in a society. So please make informed decisions to the best of your ability and don't let anecdotes dictate your worldview. OK, did 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 Stakem get involved in something that we don't know about? No, no, I think I just do this. So if you go down on that thread, I think it has an earlier thread, too. You're know, linking to an earlier thread somewhere? No. Yeah. Is this the one I put up? No, I just I went to their Twitter. Oh, I've, I put up one that has um, uh, right. So they're, they're, they've done a couple of threads like this, and they're and they're really smart. Here's a threads. response: Who would have thought frozen meat would be smarter than half of the U.S. population? <laughs> <laughs> so, but wait a minute now, because I have, I thought maybe I'm just going to go back in the search results because the Wall Street Journal says. Stakem emerges as an unlikely, oh, coronavirus misinformation watchdog. Watchdog. Ah, uh, you see? Because that's why, Leo, you need Stakem's, so they can keep you from making mistakes like that. They can read the whole headline it's instead a, of the cutoff headline. You almost made a mistake em. Oh. Oh. <laughs> that is really wild that Stakem is now in the job of protecting people from misinformation. By the way, I that think it's thread, everyone's job to protect. It is, people isn't it? Like, yes, it is. And I would say I would love to support them, but I cannot eat steakums. I'm so sorry, steakums. It does say oh. something when a frozen meat snack is more presidential than the, than the meathead in yes. the White House. Such <laughs> a meathead. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, I'm sorry. I apologize. Fifteen and a half thousand retweets, fifty-eight thousand likes. Steakum, ladies and gentlemen. I, there is one adage that I agree with, which is, and I read this at the very beginning of this, people will remember how brands respond to this. And brands that respond well will benefit, but there are a lot of brands, at least initially, I think there may be learning, uh, that did not respond well. And uh, people won't forget quickly. And not just that. So I'm, I'm doing a, um, a live thing tomorrow with uh, uh, aimed at advertisers. Um, and I can look up what, what, what it's called. Um, uh, my friend, Dave Morgan's company. And, um, I, I'm in my head, I'm getting ready to have a, a, a Jeff fit because okay. the damned advertisers are saying no. Oh, Stacy's backing up. Um, <laughs> are saying no advertising around the word COVID. Well, damn you. Like, like you're, you can be independent of this and you can be nowhere near this stuff and we're living it all our lives and we're seeing this. No, no, no. I don't want to be anywhere near that. Because it'll get, you know, get some on me. Well, support the news where it is and support society. They need it. Newspapers are going to die. Uh, news organizations are going to die. And you don't want to have any of your ads near COVID. F you, advertisers. <laughs> you know what? I'm going to agree with Jeff 100% on this. That is true. I'm like in... It takes I a think... pandemic to get us to agree. <laughs> well, no. I will remember advertisers. And this is a great time... Like a lot of brands are doing these social media things like we're all in this together by Dove. Wash your hands with Dove yeah, soap. Yeah, that's not that's not good. No. And I like well, no, that I mean I don't I don't actually get, bad, I don't find that as offensive. But, it's not well, but like let's be like take out a full page ad in the New York Times. Thank the people who are reporting on yeah, stuff. I know that reporters you. It's a great idea. are kind of controversial if our current president. But I mean they're essential knowing what's happening in the world and the work they're trying to do to tell you the actual truth. I mean, right now that's kind of what's separating us from a dictatorship in the sense that we have someone who is invested in not telling us the truth. And at least we have journalists like who are like, okay, so I know in the press conference today, he said this, but that's actually not true. And the situation is more like this. Um, but without reporters, you have Fox news. 
It's interesting because yep. Steakum has a ad budget of $1 million a year, which is paltry for a brand like Steakum. And a couple of years ago, uh, they decided that they were going to take a little bit of a left turn with their social media account. And I think it's – so this is not new, apparently. I have not been No, told. No, I was yeah, not aware of it either. Some people, people are. Some people say, oh, yeah, I knew Steakum's yeah. Twitter account. I, I was not in the know. And here's, a, here's one from April 6th. I just see a lot of nonsense on the timeline every day and know it can be hard for individuals – to voice this type of stuff. And for some reason, people are more inclined to listen when it's coming from a brand rather than a person, which is pretty unfortunate. <laughs> I mean, it's like Steakum suddenly became sentient. Yeah. It's, it's just... it's just Sentient faux meat. It's just bizarre. <laughs> no. uh, yeah. And then uh, somebody posted a can of mixed vegetables responding. <laughs> 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 okay, this is why Twitter is okay. I'm following yeah, Steakum. Yeah, Twitter is okay, yeah. I'm following Steakum, yeah. Yeah. Wow. Who would have thunk it? <sighs> and I had a steak sandwich for, for my, it was much better as my wife's, we had grilled the other night, and a, a little thinly sliced uh, honestly, flank steak, marinated, honestly, with some at this cheddar point, and mustard. I oh. think I'm regretting that Steakum didn't enter the Democratic primary. Mm. Let's not talk about that today. Our uh, time for, do you know, Jeff, how to play the drums and the trumpet and all that stuff? Do you know what to do for that? I, I learned from you last week. And I'm gonna he watched me do it last week. Let's see. <laughs> That's a bad start. <laughs> it's time for the Google change log. <laughs> <laughs> it's you know why, Good start. With Good start. Pl press play. You got. You didn't have autoplay turned on. The Google change log. <laughs> we get so much, so much fun, so much fun out of the Google <laughs> change log. Thank you, Jeff. Um, they finally turned on require eyes to be open on the April Pixel 4 update, which I've got to do. Uh, there, Google was. Uh, you know, uh, not attacked, but criticized for the fact that their face recognition worked even if you didn't have your eyes open. And it's taken them, how long has this been? Six months to finally turn that feature on. But you want to get your update on your Pixel. because you And you do generally want that on. Otherwise, people can hold your phone up to you while you're asleep. And oh, yeah. I was going to think, oh, my gosh, the middle school pranks that could ensue. Uh huh Hi, Jinx. Have they, has your daughter yet got to the stage where they draw on people's faces while they're asleep? Um, that has happened. I think that, ha that starts very early. Oh, it's such a terrible habit. <laughs> have you got, have you been TP'd yet? Your, your daughter is the they age. Don't, I don't think they TP anymore. Oh, yeah, because that's a price. That's a, oh, <laughs> oh, that's oh, a oh, valuable oh. object. You don't want to do that. Of course. What am I thinking? Oh no! I would say with all the with all the cameras and doorbell cams, oh, I don't think I think TPing's going oh. by the wayside. Oh, oh that's interesting. Oh. That's a huge cultural shift. <laughs> I think we talked about this, didn't we? Um, I don't think so. Maybe you did. Okay. I don't remember it. No, I'm like I'm like oh, I feel like we TPing we had this conversation over. somewhere. You know what but, else is I over? Mean, it's not Hangouts Meet anymore. It's Google oh. Meet. They just snuck that in on us. So just get used to calling it. Is that the professional one or is that the... That's the everyone uh, one, I think. Now. That's the everyone one. Yeah. Okay. I, but what, the every... Meet no, is? The well, we were using Hangouts. At some point, they're going to change that to Meet. I don't know if they've done that. But uh, actually, you know, I still oh. use Hangouts. You know, maybe they haven't changed it because I, I use Hangouts because I'm a, a Google Fi user. But I have not... I don't use it for a video calls, so I don't know. That's an interesting question. Interesting question. I have a number for Jeff if he wants it. Okay. Ooh. Don't give no, we're in the we're nope. in the change log. Get your it's change logish. Okay, never mind. Go ahead. Go it. ahead. Go ahead. Well no, Leo's saying don't. No, so it, no, if it's his show. I don't know what it is. If it's change logish, do it. Well, it's change log things that Google changes because then it's yes. not change log. Change log. Okay. Is you know when you get the new software and there's a bunch of new features that that's the change log. Okay, I'll wait. Save it. I'll, it's okay. I'm saving it. Save it. The burden. Don't burn content. <laughs> we we did burn some content. We already mentioned Google is giving three months of Stadia probe to YouTube 
Oh, you got to put me to sleep again. Premium users. Back we go. Stadia Pro, not Stadia Probe. That's something else. Google Arts and Cultures app will make your photos look like masterpieces. I've used this Arts and Culture app just for the wallpaper. I did one. There was a, there was a Japanese AI artist. I did. Ooh. So you can you can uh, this is uh, so your 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 art can be inspired by a great painting. So, for instance, Edvard Munch's The Scream. You could take this simple thing and make it scream like. You could choose from works by artists like Monet, Frida Kahlo, and others. I like this good this uh, Google Arts and Culture. <gasps> Hello. Hello. So this is a. There's new, always spam anyway. Yeah, new feature in Google Arts and Culture where tech meets arts and culture. And now you can make. I always thought it was just about beautiful paintings, but now you can make Starry Starry Night. Your your picture of the full moon, the pink moon last night, look like. Oh, I saw it. It was beautiful. Wasn't it? Yes. Was it pink where you were? It was rosy. Yeah. I, I kind of had to squint to make it rosy, but I did. Yeah. <laughs> I wanted it to be rosy too. Google will require new Android 11 devices. This is a big story, and I'm sure they covered it all about Android. To support seamless updates, this is uh, fantastic news because updating has always been an issue. And one of the things that keeps people from updating is what I'm going through right now, which is this long reboot process. Um, what they're going to do is they're going to have two images on your phone, one of what they call an AB partition. The, the new update will be installed behind the scenes on an inactive partition while the current operating system is running. When you reboot, it just takes the inactive partition, makes it active, keeps the older version, makes it very easy to roll back. Uh, and you can do all these updates kind of behind the scenes without even uh, any interruption, just a reboot. I love You're going to need double before. the memory, though, right? Yeah, and that may be why they didn't do it before, because, yeah, it's oh. going to take some storage. But I don't think okay. the ROMs are all that big. I mean, nowadays... Oh, I don't know. And it, it kind of keeps them in check, I guess. Of course, yeah. it could lead to the faster obsolescence of phones. I'm just yeah. throwing all this out there. Yeah. Okay. So, anyway, I think uh, other vendors will probably uh, do this as well. It's part of the Android ecosystem. Actually, I guess Google says they're going to require it. We already did the machine learning of uh, Duo calls. Google is shedding, shed, shutting, shutting down neighborly. A neighbor. This is Indian app, so I didn't know about. Oh, it. I was like, what is neighborly? Uh, yeah. Um, it, you know, the, but it was it was an experiment. It's too bad because I wish they'd brought it to the rest of the world. Truthfully, I I'd, I'd prefer Google did it than say, the Ring doorbell. But it's gone. Bye-bye. Hardly knew ye. Bye-bye. Google's speakers and display add local control of smart home devices from Hue, TP-Link, and more. Yay, local control. We are we were excited about that. You better this explain, show. explain this to me, Stacey. Oh, this means that instead of things calling back to the cloud, you will have control... Oh. Managed from your Google device, like home device. So Google won't so, know when I turn off my lights. It's privacy protecting. It is lowers latency. And if your network stays up, even though your internet goes down, you could actually have still control your stuff. Yeah, that's so frustrating when you say, Echo, turn off my lights. And it says, I can't do that right now. It's like, what? <laughs> but that's because it had to go up to the cloud. So this will. So Stacy, um, uh, Stacy was nice enough to ask, answer two questions from Greg Newmark. On email last week, does that this have any impact on his decision whether to go Wise or stay TP Link? No, Wise will get there eventually. Um, okay. TP Link. I mean, I, as I told him, TP Link has historically been a little slower with their updates, whereas Wise has been faster. So if he, like security updates, so that's why I said, yeah, if you wanted, to, if you care about that sort of thing, and I felt like he might be the kind who does, then mm -hmm. he should probably go with Wise. According to Android uh, Police, other uh, hubs like SmartThings and uh, Wink have done this in the past because mm -hmm. they didn't have those servers and all of that stuff. Right. Um, and what's really interesting is Google on their uh, on Gboard does actually cloud-based uh, NLP, natural language processing. So right now, if you tell Google to do something with your voice, it's possible 
that it won't actually work because that does actually go up to the cloud. Right. So what you're looking at is a lot of the automations that you may oh, have set, so routines. Okay. Um, so before we get too excited, you know, do think about like, are we going to do natural language processing locally? Uh, I don't think they do that yet, but they could, and in maybe this, they will. In this diagram, it looks like they're they're taking speech and uh, okay, well then doing it poof. locally instead of going to the cloud, they're going right to the uh, device and executing. So, uh, Google is working currently with Philips, uh, probably Signify, right for the Hue lights, uh -huh. GE, Wemo, LifeX, and TP Link on this SDK. And we'll open it to all developers starting next month. So, Craig, you could get this uh, next month. That's it. This is a good thing. I like it. Just faster and more reliable is good. But you, as yeah. you say, speech may not be faster and more reliable. If it's I mean, only yeah. Uh, who's, it always drives me nuts when I'm like, hey, gee, turn off master bedroom. And then there's like this. Okay. Yeah. No, it takes. Well, oh, you're a you're a mean boss. They got they got to hop to it. That Google. No, no, Boy. I had the same experience. I have to wait. I I'm going down the hall to go to bed, and I say, "Hey, turn off the lights," and then I have to stop and wait to see if it happens. And it's usually a few seconds. Gosh darn it! Should be like that. No, oh my! Oh my! Oh my. What, what a rough life you this have! It's a first world problem. They're waiting for someone to turn off a switch. The clapper worked instantly. It's true. <laughs> Google Fit is redesigned to make step tracking more prominent, not less. More prominent, not less. I don't know if I like that. What I if, don't know if I care. What if? What if I'm not doing <laughs> steps? What do you use as a movement tracker, Stacy? Well, I was hoping it would arrive by now, but it hasn't yet. Um, I am using the Fitbit Charge 3 and then Oh, you got tomorrow, the new one. No, this is the 3. The the 4 isn't. It's on it's still sale Monday. Okay. Um, but the Wise Band just shipped oh, yes. yesterday, so that should be coming today or tomorrow. Yeah, well, I saw that Wise was doing that. I thought that was very interesting. Are they sourcing that from some Chinese company or are they making it themselves? Um, undoubtedly sourcing it from some Chinese yeah. company, but that's their model, right? Yeah, that's yeah. what they do. Yeah, they're going to be on the show next week, so I will ask them all oh, those questions. You're then. kidding? Oh, that's yeah. exciting. That's on so, not this show. That's Stacey's not tomorrow's IOT, show. The, the IOT, the other show, show Stacy. You call yes. that the other show? The other show that she does with Kevin. Oh, you could call the show. That is we have called so the much show. better. So much better. No, it's just focused on IoT. That's right. all. I know. Chrome yeah. OS tablet gets iPad style gestures. I don't think anybody cares about that at all. <laughs> iPad style gestures. No. No. By the way, notice, I, had to, I had to say those words to make them make sense for me. Notice what uh, they're using there. That's the new Samsung Galaxy uh, Pixel. My heart, my well. heart. Yeah, it's pretty. You know, the other well, complaint you know, people made is it's, and you can see it in this picture, it's 16.9. Unlike Google's, yeah. which are three by two, and it is too wide. I guess it's all about video because it's four K. Haven't 69. we lost that battle? Yeah, maybe. I have. Uh, I don't know. I and like the heat. The other problem we didn't talk about is the heat. Yeah, you did mention the heat. The but heat you know. is all on. And ladies and gentlemen, that concludes. Get ready. You got to put your finger on it, there, Jeff. The Google change log. Man, oh man, you are so good. I didn't want to do this story, but Karsten put it in anyway. The toilet that recognizes... I put it in there. No. I put it in there. No. My fault. No. I already talked about it today. I'm not talking it a second time. <laughs> no. No. Let's put it this way. It doesn't have to... I'm, no, I'm not putting it up. It doesn't there have to see your versions, face. Stacey. It doesn't Far have to see your versions. face. It just has to see your butt. It sees it, something else that's unique to and you. And it knows it's you. They could use weight... Just like a scale does. They could. It changes. They could. It also has a camera to take a picture of your poop. That's not unusual. And it, it, and it weighs, measures it against it the Bristol it. scale. Yeah, it weighs it on the Bri Bristol. What is this? Bri okay. Now you, really, you, you open this you can of You got to look up the Bri Bristol scale. <laughs> what the hell? Okay. This is the, how you measure the quality of your poop. The it's Bristol a, I think it's scale. one to five scale. Uh, no, Between, stop. Like, Let's stop. It's good. Okay. I don't want to know. Wait, 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 no. wait, 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 one second there. Seating time. Well, now men are going to come off bad at that because we sit there to read. 
What, that you, is not healthy for your your bottom. What you think well, men do that, but women don't? Right. Is that it's, true? Is that you, a gender no difference? You, I don't know. Yeah. You shouldn't do it. It's not healthy for your bottom. See, you could tell right there. I say I read, and she's yelling at me. Yeah, she is already. I'm not yelling at you. I'm just saying that that's Jeff, not good for you. It's bad it for your butt. It promotes hemorrhoids. <laughs> <sighs> Yeah, the, the whole this story was promoted. I won't say by whom. Uh, as a uh, look up anal print. <laughs> no, and that's what it do not. That's whatever what it does. you do. Don't, do don't not look Google that. Google that. <laughs> ah, that is ah, just you, a okay. recipe for disaster. No. I got Here's I got worried, I'm, but it came up with this. Stop. It was just, it was a, it was a scientific paper. Stop. Here's amazed. what happened. Stanford researchers they invented a toilet that can analyze your poop and pee. They do this in a couple ways. There's several cameras on a, a toilet seat cover that oh analyzes it, that looks at your that looks at your poop. <laughs> and they also have done a machine learning algorithm that recognizes <laughs> your <laughs> anal print because okay. they wanted to distinguish between different people who are sitting on the toilet. Right. All of this data is encrypted, but it is stored in the cloud. They also track things like urine flow. And I don't think they track like the quality, like the analysis of the urine, like some of the things we saw at CES does. That is the whole story. Now everyone has the facts. It doesn't exist as a real product. Please let no, us never speak this. of it again. And I will, I will leave this. <laughs> well done, Stacey. Please let us well never speak of it again. So how adult of you. Here's another well thing not done. to Google, which is the Bristol scale. But you will, uh, you will get. No, a the Bristol scale is very important to know for overall physical health. You should know about the quality of your poop. I was always told that that was a trait of the German people, Jeff. You would know this. And in fact, there's their toilets have little shelves on them, so you can inspect yes. your uh, daily. It's very strange. It's very strange those toilets. I do oh, not want to no. look. I do not. No. All right, uh, boy, I have, right, really have to apologize to everybody. So, so Karsten, Karsten, I actually should have just let it go. Karsten could have got blamed. That's I what took I the say rap for you, Karsten. Every time I go to the bathroom, let it go. Okay, it is t it's time. Oh, wait, hold on. I have, I misspoke. The Bristol scale is seven. There's seven. I thought it was five. Yes, you actually have looked it up as I did. But please, let's not get any more than that. <laughs> <sighs> okay, uh, moving long right along. Quarantine. Why do I have the urge if, to sanitize were, my hands at this point? Yeah, you should. If I were an advertiser, instead of COVID, I, I would, would not want to be that. next to the Bristol That's scale. That's probably in the contract. <laughs> things you will not be next to. And that's one of them right there. It's science. It's science. Everybody poops, as the book says. I just think about the poor research assistants and what they have to do. Yes, yeah, someone had to train a machine. You have to yeah. have data to train them on that. And I'm like, aren't we really that Where different? Where did they get Never the data, data set? Where did they get the data set? If only is, I'd studied more in my classes, I could have been solving coronavirus instead of here. Ladies and gentlemen, uh, this is the point of the show uh, where we do the what we call the back of the book. Stacy gets a pick. Do you have a pick, Stacy? Well, I was going to have a number because it's actually Google-related. Yeah. Do your number. number do your number. We can all do numbers. I don't mind. Numbers are good. So, well, and I also thought I would have my wise thing right now to show you all, but I don't. I don't. So, right. uh, six million is my number. And that is Google's G Suite now has 6 million paying businesses wow. up from 5 million last year. This is notable because now there are 6 million people who, who are unhappy with like the normal <laughs> services. <laughs> yeah. so, that is a I good number. Good, good, a good number. Well done, Stacy. Well done. Jeff is very happy about you that. You psychoanalyzed properly. All right, now, so she did something for me. I'm going to do something for Stacy. Okay. Because I want, I didn't, I didn't put this in the, in the notes, but I'll use this. I want, I want her to, Stacy's playing the uh, opening up of the six gigahertz band for unlicensed yes. Wi Fi use. What does oh, that yes. do for us, That'd boss? Wi Fi 6E. Uh, wi Fi 6 enhanced. So this is, okay, 
this is in the, yeah, like you said, in the six gigahertz band, what this is going to do is it's only going to allow devices that are running Wi-Fi 6 and that have the capability to run in that band to run there. So it's going to be like a super fast lane. It's like a toll lane without a toll, right? Um, and the way that the... Uh, it's using OFDM. So the way that the, the frequency this is modulated is going to make it so your packets don't, this is actually with Wi-Fi 6 in general, I believe. Um, it's a new way to, to handle the packet flow. So they don't have to line up and wait to be handled by the router. They can all go simultaneously. Um, and then, so you can do all the benefits of Wi-Fi 6 and now you get its own separate band. So you're going to see this in laptops, um, gaming rigs, um, computers, think think things that need a lot of bandwidth. It's not going to propagate well through walls. So, uh, you know, and because it's so high the, frequency. Yeah. Yeah. Because it's higher frequency. But really, the benefit is if you are at like a 2.4 gigahertz device, you're not even going to see this. You can't even get on with your old school janky self. Of course not. So which is actually good why, because it means it will have the band to itself. Less congestion. Less congestion, and that actually goes hand in hand with less propagation too. So your neighbors won't be impinging on your Wi-Fi either. You have impinged upon my Wi-Fi for the I very last time. Actually, the the moral of this, and I mentioned this before, though, that FCC votes is on this April twenty third. I think it's a given they'll say yes. But the moral Broadcom of this, Broadcom already has chips out, so yeah, we're hoping so. They better say yes. The moral of this, though, is we wouldn't have Wi-Fi if the FCC had not allowed an unregulated spectrum, two point four gigahertz. They were thinking baby monitors and you know wireless phones, but as it turned out, some smart people were able to develop Wi-Fi based on it, without having to get FCC approval and all of that stuff. And so it's good to have unregulated band for people to innovate on. It. And I think it's uh, great to vote on this and say yes. Thank you, Stacey. And there was a there was a lot of drama, like probably six years ago, actually, about this. Like people were very upset that we were talking about bringing more unlicensed spectrum. Who had out the of, six like, gigahertz spectrum? Was it? Is it? Are they taking it away from anybody? Was that TV? Um, no, it's way, no. way too high for anything useful. Um, That's too high. Okay. I don't know this. I'm not going to make something up. I did know this at one time, but I don't know it now. It's such a high frequency. I can't, you know, it wouldn't be useful I think useful it's the Navy. It's, oh, maybe. It's, I feel like it's a military uh, defense well, department, but... Uh, and see, I don't have my spectrum chart up in my office because it's in a frame and it's nice. There so. will be a battle uh, because uh, some have said there should be a spectrum auction. Well, they're not going to do a spectrum auction for this. They're just going to say, do what you want. It doesn't, it doesn't propagate well enough to have a conflict problem, I don't think. Oh, no, there's always a conflict problem. <laughs> there's, always a con there's always a conflict problem. If you've listened to this show, you know nothing but that. It's already used uh, fixed point-to-point -point common carrier, fixed satellite, broadcast auxiliary, and cable television relay. Okay. They're going to use, oh, they're, that's right, they're going to use um, it's dynamic a line, spectrum. It's a line of sight thing, so, it, you know. I, no, they're going to have a database, I believe. Oh, interesting. Remember white spaces? Yep, <laughs> yep, yep. Yeah, and we developed the database in the spectrum sharing technology. I think they're going to do that for this. So that's good. I, I, I think it's a good thing. Yeah. Uh, my pick of the week is, uh, a, is a quarantine pick of the week. It was going to be my sewing machine. Maybe it will be in the future <laughs> when I get it. But I want to tell you about a website that you'll, you'll like, Stacy, called Bread Scheduler. So there's a big problem when you're making sourdough bread. Long, it takes a long time. It's a long rise, and you got to time it out with your life. Bread Scheduler lets you take your favorite bread recipe and figure out what the optimum time. For instance, weekday sourdough bread, 23 hours to make. Best to start at 8 p.m., and they give you a little <laughs> a little uh, Gantt chart. This is why I knew you'd like this, Stacy. <gasps> Chart. Yay! And you could say at the ideal time, you could say if I start it, I start the artelise at 8 p.m. I'll saw it at 8:30. I'll stretch and fold at 8:45. Uh, cover and rest at 9:45. Get up at 7:45. Divide and pre-shape. Shape and proof at 8 a.m. The bake begins at 6 p.m. tomorrow night if I start at 8 tonight. And that's what we're talking about. That's what that we're is talking about. Really intense. It's that takes all the kind of like. 
organic it's, pleasure out of it. Well, it's, you know, I've started the bread at the wrong time and you don't ever want to do that. <laughs> yeah. You're going to be baking this bread at 3 a.m., folks. Uh, so this has recipes. It has the little Gantt chart. It has step-by-step. -step. This actually is great. I know a lot of you are looking at sourdough bread. There are other styles. There's tartine style, which takes even longer because they have very long. Oh, no, it's only eight hours. Oh, that's nice. Oh, yeah, because he doesn't. That's less. Yeah, that's less. Uh, he does these long uh, rises that I really like. Um, there's County Fair sourdough, also a tartine recipe. Overnight weekend bread. Everybody ought to have some overnight weekend bread. So if you've been doing a bread baking and if you've got a little sourdough, and incidentally, if you go to the website, there's a whole sourdough make a starter that takes 84 hours. I think that's that's longer than it takes to make a baby, I think, but I might be wrong on that. No, um, no, it takes five, four to five days. So yeah, no, I know, I'm kidding. Eight, and I have a starter. Oh, like, I've been my starter has been doing so well. And it only takes a few seconds to make a baby. <laughs> <laughs> well, uh, okay. okay. So maybe for Andrew, I don't know. So um, the uh, make a starter, everybody. It's a great thing. One of the things about starters is you're feeding them all the time, so they're always getting bigger, so you have to find things to do with your starter. And if it's not bake a loaf of bread every day, maybe you'll do what I did and have sourdough pancakes for breakfast. They're quite good. Those... <gasps> I made the pandemic sourdough ones from the Boing Boing Ooh. with the, the uh, is it brandy? Grand Marnier in there? Oh, yum. Delicioso. Breadscheduler.com. So it solves a big problem. <laughs> what are you doing, Jeff? What are you doing? I had I had a deer going berserk oh. in the backyard, but it's fun now. Oh, so that's too I'm going to show you my berserk deer. I had we the animals are getting a little lively. I feel like they're they're thinking we're going to get to eat these people pretty soon. Uh, I had a giant turkey looking in my uh, window in my kitchen this morning. <laughs> I mean, giant, huge, huge. I would show you, but I don't think it's uh, propagated yet to my Google Photos site. Let's see. No, nope, it hasn't. But it was a beautiful. I can't. Get, how do you force propagation to Google Photos? You have to open Google Photos. That's the on oh no, an iPhone anyway. I, well, I I do, and it doesn't it doesn't propagate. Are you using an iPhone? No, you're using an Android. Device. Oh, uh, well, I, I'm using a Google device. It should be faster. Yeah, it, it should, should just happen. Out. I don't know why. You maybe you don't have it turned on. Maybe you don't have it turned on. Oh, buddy. you have to be on a Wi-Fi network. Well, so I am. Nice. You could turn that off if you want. Need some more oxygen oh. there, Stacy. I d I'm sorry, y'all. <sighs> I don't know what to say to y'all. Just say, goodbye, y'all. Thank you for being here. We do this week in Google every Wednesday, 1.30 p.m. Pacific, 4.30 p.m. Eastern, 2030 UTC. What? I feel kind I of attacked by that. You did a number? I thought your I number, did a number. I thought your number you did, you did six was gigahertz. six gigahertz. No, that was that was just being nice to Stacy. Oh, do a number. Um, I have a very sorry. fast number. It just came out. I just saw it on Twitter. It's New been number. Eight hours, but eh, I didn't see eh, it. Eh, eh. New number. My number is Space Force debuts on Netflix May 29. Wait a minute. What? <laughs> Wait, Space is that Force. a is this television a Trump, show or is, is that our Trump, Space Force? A Trump org it's, it, Well, that's the funny thing is the show is getting out before the Space Force is. Oh, Steve uh, Carell. Oh, my God. Photos photos at that tweet. This is going to be. Oh, this looks awesome. Yeah, uh, right. I, I, I knew you'd love it. Oh, my God. <laughs> Steve Carell in uniform. I love a man in uniform. Jimmy O. Yang. He has the actual Space Force logo, which was ripped off from Star Trek on his four-star jacket. Oh, and it has some of the other great people. Who, who wrote this? Because uh, this looks like it. Oh, my God. Look who's in it. John Malkovich as the professor. Of course. John Malkovich was in something I was watching, and it was so surprising. I almost fell off my couch, but he, I cannot remember what it was now. He's a surprising fellow. That's what John Malkovich is. He uh, he likes to play against type. Okay, I can't wait. So I just wanted to get. To, I just want to make sure wait. we fit that in there. I wish you know. they probably rushed it. They're hoping that COVID won't end. Oh, yeah. before May twenty ninth, and I think yeah. they're going to win. Following Space Force at Real Space Force <laughs> on the Twitter. <laughs> Uh, what was it? I, I started off with a lovely uh, rendition of Les Mis before the show, and then we end with Space Force. You're oh, welcome. I can't You're wait. all so welcome. That's going to be awesome. Isn't it? That, that isn't even on the Bristol scale. 
Uh, yeah. We do this show every Wednesday, 1.30 Pacific, 2.30, uh, 4.30 uh, Eastern, uh, 21.30 UTC. Whatever. It's on sometime. We don't know. We don't care. It's all the same. Is it Wednesday? Is it Tuesday? We don't know anymore. What day is it? Is it I don't night? know. Is it morning? We have no idea. It's just on sometime, and you're not going anywhere either. So subscribe and just listen to it, huh? I, I huh? Have, I've heard from many people that the only way oh. they know what day it is is by our broadcast schedule. Wait, yes. I have to thank everybody because like last week, I think it was, I was super glum and I was like, oh, you know, and then I, I said that it made my day because somebody had reached out and said, you know, I was a positive, nice person for them to listen to. And then I heard from lots of people that I was a positive, oh. nice person and that all of us were positive, nice people and they loved the show. Yeah. So the show everybody, thank you. Nice this is people. your buddy show. This is a show where your buddies get together and we have fun and we talk about poop and yes. stuff like that. By the way, Lisa Kudrow is also going to be on Space Force. <gasps> oh, I didn't know She's that. She's so oh, fantastic. And it's produced by Greg Daniels, co-creator of The Office. So it's going to be I good. cannot wait. I'm glad they managed to get the production before they had to keep six feet apart. Yeah. Yeah, this looks really, really good. It's uh, straight to series, picked up in January 2019. It's a workplace comedy. So it's going to be like The Office. It's going to be a mock doc centered around the people tasked with creating a sixth branch of the armed service, Space Force. And it was, in fact, sparked by Trump's June oh order. Oh, my to establish gosh. Space Force. I cannot wait. Oh, okay. it's going to be Now I'm so really great. excited. <laughs> Kudrow, who has turned down many offers to star in broadcast network pilots, will be a recurring character in the series at his Maggie Naird. The wife, Steve Carell's wife, he's General Mark R. Naird. She's, she's a Washington Air Force wife who has sublimated parts of herself to her husband's career for two decades. But as he takes on his biggest challenge, she's growing in a different direction. Oh, it's going to be fun. It's Space Force. Space Force. Hey, uh, one more uh, quick note before we go on. Uh, you should have said something, Jeff. I didn't know this. We do an AMA. We have been since the uh, quarantining began with our hosts, chance to ask people uh, things and so forth. Uh, this week, it's going to be uh, Jason Howell from All About Android, MacBreak Weekly's Andy Anako, and this guy over here, Jeff Jarvis. It'll be 11.30 a.m. on Friday, that specific time. Ask me anything. I won't be there, so... Ask Jeff anything that's coming up. I'm excited. Ladies and gentlemen, uh, because this is a podcast, you can watch us live. If that's the only way you can figure out what day it is, you got my blessing. You, uh, we will be on the Twitch stream, twit.tv slash live as audio and video. You can also ask your Amazon Echo. A lot of people do that. They go, Echo, what day is it? And Echo starts playing the show. You know it's Wednesday. Nice. You can get on-demand versions of the show from our website, twit.tv. In this case, it's twit.tv slash twig. But you don't have to go through all that trouble. If you just go, it's a simple thing. You only do it once. Go to your podcast app and subscribe to This Week in Google. And that way, you just from now on, you get it automatically. And you don't even have to listen to it. You just know it's there if you need it. That's what, that's what really our motto is. We're here if you need us. Thank you, everybody. I hope you stay safe. Wash your hands. Stay inside. Keep listening to Twit. Thank you, Stacy. Thank you, Jeff. And Thank we'll you, boss. See you soon. Thank you. On Twig. Bye bye, everybody. <laughs>